Welcome to class, all you pickleball champs. You are in 452 Advanced Doubles Game Film Analysis. Today we are analyzing the PPA semifinal match between Johns Waters versus Rittenmeyer and Kawamoto. If this is your first time here, this course is designed for advanced players who want to get better and understand the game of pickleball at a much deeper level. If you are looking to improve your game, start playing tournaments, thinking of becoming a coach yourself, or simply want to stop losing and not understand why, this course is for you. This course is in-depth. It is game film analysis where we slow things down, pick professional play apart, and understand the mistakes which are holding people back from winning. Therefore, if this is, your, is what you have been looking for to take your enjoyment of pickleball to the next level, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future course videos. I'm your professor. Class is in session. Okay, let's back it up. A couple of these players you may not know before. Right here on the screen, that is Kawamoto. I'm going to move forward here. So Kawamoto was serving her male partner up there in the light blue backwards black hat is Rittenmeyer. And then lower right-hand corner right now receiving is Annalie Waters. And the male partner for her is Ben Johns. Okay, guys, let's get in and start analyzing this first point. If this is your first time here, we do watch the entire point through every time, at least once, and then we back it up and analyze it. There's a benefit of seeing the whole point, how things progressed, um, so that you can kind of get an understanding of how we got to a certain point in the uh, progression to determine where things are. Ben Johns actually called that ball out before Annalie Waters' beautiful ATP. That's really close. He may have actually been correct that there was space between that line and that ball, uh, but in the end, it really didn't matter. So let's just take a look back, and we will kind of look here and say, okay, like, how did we get here? Not a very difficult um, uh, dink across, but assuming that she hit it long. So I believe that this kind of breaks down right here. So I'm a very uh, big proponent of if you don't have to, don't step your um, opposite foot in front because what does that do? Let's get our start drawing here so you can see. Look how much space from this point to this point. Open court for either Annalie to hit it in. Like they're just seeing open court. Ben Johns is seeing open court. Okay, I got this. It doesn't matter how low or high this ball is. They're just speeding up because they're hitting to a to a gap, right? So what I'm talking about is right here on Rittenmeyer, his right leg crossing over for his backhand. That's something you want to avoid because of how much open court you have. So now as we go forward, he gets back in time. Ben hits a nice soft. But then he does what I believe is even worse is he runs around and now there's even more look at all this open court what does he expect his partner to do and normally you don't see somebody at his you know playing it in a semi-final match who's running around very much uh, Tyson McGovern does it quite a bit and so to get to this level and do something where you're doing that to your teammate you really have to have good dinks and the like and so my opinion is as you can see this dink was high but let's just sit there and say okay like where's that ball it's a yellow ball it's right there in the yellow zone so uh Annalie Waters is taking a risk the problem is even if you are let's say a 4-0 player and you're trying to get better and be like, when should I attack? When should I take the risk of a yellow ball? What any good coach is going to tell you is, hey, if your opponent is out of position and you have this giant lane where their feet, when they, if they can get to the ball, their feet aren't going to be set. There's no way at this moment to get back and for them to get into position 
see how she has to hit that off balance, feet not set, just kind of whack it back. So that's not a good softball. And Ben Johns can now push her way back. So now uh, Kawamoto is way back here, clearly on the defense. And then she's trying her best to get back up and then hits that ball what is called out or easy ATP. That's really where it breaks down. In my opinion, should, when he goes around the ball, Kawamoto should not be watching her partner <laughs> with her shoulders turned like this. She needs to be facing this way. She needs to be down and ready. And if and this just makes me feel that they haven't played that many doubles together. She needs to know that her partner is not going to go hard cross court. And she needs to be right uh, on this middle line with her feet spread low and ready forward for whatever is going to come back. Unfortunately, she needs to give up this portion of the court because, once again, look where Ben is if the ball is going over there. Very low statistical shot and most likely would have to be hit soft. And so when you play with a partner who is going to move like this and run around their, uh, their forehand over here and leave up all that open space, you have to just say, okay, that's – what my partner's chosen to have done. You're dancing with that person. You've got to move. With, if they move to the left, you've got to move to the left. And unfortunately, she doesn't. And so I'm not blaming her. I think it's on him choosing to do a, a, a mistake running around this. I mean, look how far he steps. He takes all these extra steps. So he gets back. He's kind of in position right about here. Ball's already coming. So he's a little late. And then he decides to take one big jump to kind of in a slide where the ball was easily to his backhand. He didn't have to take any steps at all, maybe a little soft little, you know, 10% lunge, and he could have put the ball wherever he wanted, but he opens up the entire court and just sets his teammate up to get smashed on. Um, she actually had hit two great shots to just be able to handle that, and then unfortunately hits a, an out ball or an easy ATP. So um, – I think that is one thing that when people are just watching this on TV, it's hard for them to really see, oh, well, where did it break down? And this is actually where it broke down and where things started to go really bad. Uh, we'll see how that affects them moving forward. Okay, guys, I think we analyzed that point really well. Hope you learned something from that. Let's jump on into the next one. I do try and speed it up while they pick up the ball and go for that. Okay, Anna Lee Waters' turn to serve. It is nice to see uh, Rittenmeyer and Kawamoto in a semifinal match. Uh, we haven't gotten to see a lot of them, at least this season at this level, playing against uh, Ben and uh, Anna Lee Waters. Um, so... It should be nice to get a different feel of different people's take on certain things and how they're going to play stuff out. Okay, let's break this one down now. So a very, very poor fifth shot reset or drop, you can say. Like, obviously, that's she's got a good backhand. Ben's learning that, and so Ben... Didn't think it was going to come that hard. Thought he could run up a little. For Once again, we're just in the beginning of the match. So he's late. Ball's already coming. She's hitting it, and he decides to split step. What you're going to see 99% of the time when somebody is late and split stepping late is when they impact, the ball goes high and goes too far because your body weight is moving forward into the ball, and you can see how he takes a bigger swing because his body it can't be uh, still and soft. So when he should have been split stepping is right here, taking that one and a half steps in and then been ready for it. And so late, he's obviously got phenomenal hands and so does Annalee Waters. So they can kind of cover up that mistake, try and, you know, get back. But uh, Rittenmeyer has got a very strong forehand. He's right there in the middle where he should be, smashes it down on Annalee Waters even though she moved quick to try and get back, 
didn't get quite low enough and actually in my opinion went a little too far back um, on it and just couldn't get it so good point there but the big thing that you should take away i'm just going to show it one more time is right there where the ball is crossing the plane of the net that's when you need to stop your forward progression to avoid these quick hits that are testing it if Benin had his uh, feet set, I truly believe with his skill level, he would have had a nice control shot. I'm sure we'll see that on a later point. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, Ben's turn to serve. Oh, just a run around miss drop. Looks like he literally didn't hit it very clean. Probably had some nice tops. Look, definitely looks like some nice kind of side top spin. And the spin probably got him on that one. So nice return by Rinmeyer. Not super deep. Definitely not like, ooh, actually pretty shallow. So kind of surprising that he even took that as a uh, drop. But you'll see that on Ben. And early in the match, he's like, I don't got to speed this up. I, I can conserve my energy. And that ball was kind of skipping low. Okay, on to the next one. Back over to Kawamoto to serve. Little third shot drive. Ooh, let's back that one up. That was an interesting point. Okay, so obviously Rinmeier is going to run around his backhand. It appears to be all day, and so Annalie Waters is the exact person. She doesn't even try and hit a winner here. She just goes, "I'm just going to put it in the middle and make you guys decide who's going to hit it because he's in the wrong position." So then he. Slows it down, tries to do a third shot drop, doesn't get the ball, you know, short enough. So Annalie Waters has a good little volley on it, but it does get below the net. She's impacting that ball below the net, and that's all that really matters. So you can come up and take progressions. That seventh is pretty bad. And so let's take a look here. Ball is crossing the plane of the net, and look at Kawamoto's feet. You see this in a lot of the first couple points when people are really trying to, you know, take ground. She should be stopping and getting low here because she can see that the ball is even high as well. So she's late. Her feet aren't set. The ball is even coming back, coming back, coming back. I'm going to call that her split step. It looks like right there is her split step when the ball is already past the net coming back at her. And what occurs there is, and I'm just going to draw this out, when you split step late, watch this right foot. I'm going to leave that dot on there if it gets in the way of being able to see it. This is the split step. Where does the foot go? The foot goes right. Okay, so her leg, now I'm going to remove that dot. You guys can see it a little bit better. That foot goes right, but look at how her paddle is basically blocked by her leg. So when you split step late, you can't go back. You can really only go sideways and forward because your body weight is pushing you forward. You'd have to get back upright to then move your leg back. And that's every human being on the planet. This isn't something to the pros or a less seasoned pro. This is just every human being. If you're split step, see how her weight split stepping, her weight is coming forward. So you can't, when your weight's coming forward, you can't go back. And what you need to be able to do when you are progressing up and you are trying to either drop or reset the ball to give yourself time to move progress, you have to be able to split step with time and then take a step back. If she had lunged back, she would have been able to hit this ball much softer, much more controlled and put it exactly where she wanted. Annalise Waters didn't hit that hard of a shot. She's just getting someone who's running up to the net. And Ben and Annalise are going to, especially early part of the match, test you all the way up. So you're gonna, they all they wanna do is make you have to hit three or four shots to get to the kitchen line. If you achieve that, they're very happy to then go into a dink game and see where other opportunities are. But they are just going to hit balls to make you make a decision, hit them at your feet. So if you're overrunning the ball like Kawamoto does right here, you pop the ball up and give them an easy uh, put away, uh, which Ben does. Okay, I think that was a good point, a good learning point. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now it is Ridmeyer's turn to serve. that point let's 
let's take a step back and look at it. Okay, so medium depth ball. Rindmeier's obviously like, hey man, I don't want to miss serves. And this ball also becomes kind of easy back. And so just nice, easy backhand. That may be the first backhand we've seen of Rindmeier, but nice soft ball. He's very comfortable just going after Annalie Waters being the person up, which is interesting. If I was this, I can understand he's trying to stay away from Ben Johns, and he's like, well, he's basically already up, so it doesn't really matter. But, okay, let me just draw this out because I want you guys to understand this. So what Rittenmeyer is thinking is he believes that basically this, I went a little long on that line. Let's back this up a little bit. He believes that basically here, is going to be Ben John's forehand. He believes Ben will run around this little section here. And then this is basically Ben's backhand. And so by putting the ball right on that line, right here, approximately, that he can either get them to try and decide whose ball it is. And so he's much more comfortable putting it on Annalie Waters' forehand, which he does twice. He's just doing... I'm just going to keep it away. I think the ball can't come as hard at me if I, even if I'm on Annalie Waters' forehand, then putting it to Ben Johns. And so that was kind of his decision with a third shot drop and you can say a fifth shot drop. I would kind of call that drop. It bounced. I would call that more of a drop than a reset. Um, in my opinion, he's also late with this split step. If Annalie Waters had attacked straight at him, probably would have had a different result. And then I have to commend Kawamoto. She does a great job having soft hands, lifting that ball up, but getting it up so that it gets back down. See, so not, not very attackable. Ben was thinking about it. Perfect position. So the position, the spot she was going for here, which is the spot not enough people go after and mix doubles at lower levels. If you're a 3-0, 3 that's the leg where you want to be resetting stuff. Make the male player have to come all the way over if he's going to take his forehand because he'll be late. See how he's late. So if he had been over further, he could have hit that ball probably out of the air. But because he's got to go towards that leg and she's got to get out of his way, he's got to do a soft kind of neutral dink back. I'd call that a very neutral dink. I just wanted to, I'm taking a look right here. I'm just looking at Kawamoto's feet. Okay, so ball's crossing the plane net. She is late. And Annalie Waters kind of holds to decide where she's going to go with it. And so she is late, but Kawamoto is earlier than the previous time, and the ball obviously came at her higher. So that's what allowed her to do that. I wasn't, not a big improvement on technique in that singular point. Uh, the one thing I'm going to point out, once again, run around forehand. Well, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of those from Rindmeyer. So if he runs around it, you can pretty much guess he's going to be firing. Not even that hard of a shot. So this is truly like kind of more of a miss by Annalie Waters, but it was the first time she had to switch over to her backhand. So she jumps and goes to the backhand. It's really in her body. And so she lets the ball get really deep in here. Hopefully you guys can see this. The ball's right there, really impacting into near the body. You want to be much further out um, when dealing with these. And so then it just hits low. But um, I think this is not going to work out too well for uh, Rittenmeyer uh, doing these uh, runaround speed ups. But we do keep tallies of these. So on a uh, bounce speed up, Rittenmeyer has attempted one. And he's one for one on it. Uh, sometimes the male players feel that, hey, I got to, if they've actually hit the ball to me, I got to try and make something happen. Um, and he achieved it. But that ball looks like it would have gone in because it was already dipping down. And so probably a good decision by Annalie Waters uh, to not just let it go out. But one for one for Rinmar. We'll keep track of that as we continue on. Okay, let's move on to the next point.
Remeyer feeling good on getting the first point in this game. A lot of Rittenmeyer there. Okay, let's back this one up, see what broke down. It's still a very uh, shallow serve. Ben kind of just keeping them back. Very shallow even on that one. So Rittenmeyer run around forehand. And this is where I'm going to say was the mistake is Annalie goes for the backhand, which she has the best female backhand, especially kitchen, in pickleball period. But tr choosing to speed up against his speed up, she doesn't make clean enough contact for that. So that just floats the ball. And so if she'd blocked, just keeping it low, if she blocked it and said, okay, you've gotten your three to six feet, that's fine. But, yeah, this miss hit where it stays high really allows him to not even have to bend his feet, and he's just going to keep going, and he's gotten space. The big other thing is, is as you can let's just look at this. I'm just going to mark her feet so you guys can see it. So her feet are here at his impact. She chooses to go for her backhand, which puts her now at him. This is his next impact. So we've gone from one impact to the other. And she's now here. And what occurred? I'm just going to draw this. So he's obviously, hey, I got this lane. Where do you think I'm going to put this ball? Like no reason to try and go over here. That's way more difficult, way less of a percentage. So you know he's attacking because she's moved over. Now we're going to back this up. I'll use yellow this time, but give me one sec to back this up. So once again, his impact right here. So she's back on her red dots. Here's Ben's feet. This doesn't happen a lot where I get to show improper uh, positioning by the Ben Annalee Waters team, so I want to do that. Did Ben move at all? Like literally didn't move at all. So same thing for Ben. If your partner goes this way and the ball is here, you got to move over. So Ben literally in this scenario would have done better by helping out his teammate. I'll do it in red. This foot needs to get onto this side of the line, be right about there, and this foot needs to move right about, I'd say right about here, needs to move over. And so that would give his forehand this, and it would give Annalie Waters' backhand to about here. So what I do a lot of times when I have students and we're out on the court, anytime that they're anywhere, it's like, okay, stop. Put your arm all the way out. So if Annalie Waters extended her arm all the way out, probably going to be about here. Okay. Then I say, you know, point your paddle and you get a little couple extra more inches on the paddle. And then take your other partner and go, okay, extend your arm out and can your paddles touch if your paddles can't touch you're not dancing with a partner you're just on a dance floor and so you that is what you are doing is you're staying if so if your partner moves the thing that you're really moving is making sure that you can always have your paddles just connect grays and you're covering that entire area so um, i'm really glad we got this point because you see it so rarely where one of them moves right and the other one doesn't go with them. And so that's the air where Ben puts his arm out and goes, oh, shit, I should have moved. You can see that right there. That ball is between us, and Annalie just dives for it. And she does a great job. I mean, talk about a great job. And I really like the fact that Rittenmeyer realizes, hey, we got them on the defense. I've got my forehand. We're not taking, we're not taking off the gas. But the point breaks down with this footwork so that he hits this shot and it's basically over from that moment. Um, obviously the third shot drive kind of starts setting this up, but even at this point, if Ben had moved, I don't think that they necessarily would have won this point. This is where it really, uh, good shot, but really open court for Redenmeyer. Okay, I think we learned a lot on that one. Let's move on to the next one. Going to watch it all the way through. Rittenmeyer serving. 
Okay, let's back that one up real quick point here. So Rinmeyer obviously has his, hey, I'm dropping, if I'm serving, I'm dropping to Annalie Waters. And she's, this one is just at the height of the net. She's really leaning in, going to hit that ball further back. And this is where the feet we talked about break down. I'm, I just feel that Kawamoto, maybe it's the beginning of the game. This is what you do not want to see, especially at this level. But I would, I would even if I was talking with people well less rated on this is not where you should even be if you are a partner at this point. So let's back this up. Ben impacts the ball here. At worst case scenario, Kawamoto knows the ball is not coming to her in this range. You don't have to wait till it gets all the way to here. So once you've seen that the ball is not coming to you, where should you go? Okay, we're going to draw out the zone. For those of you who are new or watching one of these videos, that's just a clip. This is area one is the kitchen line, not in the kitchen. I just put the number there. Middle of that is what we like to call zone two. And right now they are at zone three. So you never, I know it's a pretty bad three, but that is a three. So you never want to be more than one zone separate from your partner. And so I'm just cleaning these lines up here. But at the point where the ball is right here, Kawamoto should immediately start going to zone two and she should stop and wait for her teammate. Now that line's a little bit a little bit aggressive of how far that is. This is really where zone two, I would say, is. But I would expect her to move forward. She can turn her head to the right to make, or her left to make sure. That's fine. But what has occurred here is hasn't moved forward. Body fully turned. She's walking. Are you going to be playing in this game? And then here she's now split stepping. So she's late a whole bunch of ways. She's trying. So her split step isn't that bad if this is where as Ben Johns is kind of blocking it. I would be happy with her stopping and getting low. She kind of does a secondary one because she's not very happy and then does this knee isn't bent push ball. And all of that occurred because she was just watching, not focused, and then just gets attacked. And so she should get – if she does it later and does it better – I will definitely point it out so you guys have a better example of what it should be because this is everything of how you don't want to be someone's uh, good doubles partner because this drop is not great, but it's not bad enough that you're not ready to get the next one. And all Annalie Waters did was make her make a decision. Are you going to let it bounce or are you going to volley it? That's all Annalie Waters did, which is all you can really do and what the best thing to do on your opponents when they're trying to move up is make them make a decision. And she, all she did was that she didn't hit an overly hard shot. She didn't try hitting a winner. She didn't try hitting away from her, which is the most important thing. She had the ball directly at her. She saw exactly where it, she hit it. Basically I'd say um, maybe knee high, maybe a little bit lower. And because she was in the wrong position and wasn't low and set for it, she misses it, and uh, Ben Johns and Ellie Waters get the ball back. So hopefully you guys learned from that one. Uh, that one we don't normally have to talk too much about at this level, um, so I wanted to take that opportunity to really drill that in. Okay, I'm going to back this up so we get a full, clean view of this. Uh, Waters turn to serve. Good things happen when you get to the kitchen line. And that's what just happened. Let's back this one up and see how this point goes. Okay, so Anna Lee Waters serves midcourt. Once again, decent return, semi-deep. So Ben, have you noticed the difference? Ben is dropping to Rindmeyer. Rindmeyer is dropping to Waters. That's something you should pay attention to. So right here, watch this. 
just because we talked about it on the last point, I really got to point this out. I'm just going to draw a line. Here's our zone two. Okay. Annalee Waters is already in zone two before Ben has had to impact the ball. So let's take a look back here. She hits the serve. She sees right here. I don't have to hit this ball. What does she do? She moves forward. She's now in zone two. But what does she do? Does she keep running? She could have kept running and gone all the way up there, but she doesn't. She stops. Now, at her innate ability, did she stop past zone two? Yep. She's a little past it. And her and Ben obviously hit great, great drops, and she has very fast hands. So if you're a 4-0 or 4-5 player, I would definitely recommend stopping at the actual line. Um, but she feels comfortable going a little bit forward. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. But here's the biggest thing. This ball is crossing the planet. Look at that. She split steps and she's down. Ball is crossing the planet line, split steps, and she's down. So then it's, okay, you went, you know, maybe a foot and a half past that zone because the, because the return didn't come very deep. It's probably what had her go a little bit further. But she is ready here. That's what we're talking about. And so this is the big thing to take away from Annalie Waters' game and when people are doing it right is how you should be being set of ready. I completely hate, and if I was the coach of Kawamoto, we would be having strong conversations. She's standing straight up, not engaged, not ready, because the ball didn't come to her. And you see where her partner is. She's just like, well, I'm over in this corner. That's not how you play good mixed doubles. Your job is not just to defend uh, one fourth of the court because you are a woman that is absolutely wrong. So anyways, Ben drops to Rin Meyer's backhand, which is fine. And he gets down to get the next ball. A little late, really trying to catch up to waters, but gets down in time and hit a good enough drop shot. And then he's okay. Hey, let's go. And, here, I think Annalie Waters could have moved up a little bit earlier so that they were a little more staggered. I'm just backing up. I want to take a look at this. So she's she's She thinks it's going to come to her, and there she's a little late. Right here, she's a little late. I think she was worried that it was going to pop up a little bit higher. So she's just kind of waiting to see because she didn't have to go a long way. But what she does is she gets down just in time. Look at this, foot moves back. This is the number one thing that separates people from like a 4-0 to a 4-5 or 5 is this at the kitchen line is moving that right foot back, coming up here, split stepping, realizing and giving space. That's what allows you to hit great dinks after you've gone to the kitchen line and not make pop-ups or hitting it into the net is just because you got there, you still got to be able to step back, give space to get your paddle on the ball. Okay. Ben gets what he sees he thinks is going to be a high dink. So he's ready. Look at him get down. He get crouched down like a tiger. And he goes, let's see, is this going to be attackable? And he goes, heck yeah. And why did he do that? What, what put that instinct in him of getting extra ready? I'll tell you what did that for him seeing this that is what you should be looking for so why do we dink and put somebody out wide one yeah we want a pop-up but it's to get the spacing of where they should be on the court here is kawamoto's foot and rinmeyer he's right here he's not where he should be he should be further over and that is if you haven't played enough with somebody or if they play a different way, that is the big issue. And especially if you are got a lot of innate talent coming from tennis, these are the small things that separate the top pros from the other. He needs to be here because, yeah, you got to move your feet a lot in pickleball to be ready, and you have to be preset. So you have to get over, and then you got to get back. I'm going to leave that in there just so you can see it. So 
Ben Johns gets down because he's going, all I got to do is I don't even have to get that good of a hit on this because he's not where he should be. So the ball carried a little bit further over, but you can see Ben is trying to put the ball. I'm going to move this out of the way now. Ben's trying to go here with the ball. So he's not trying to avoid someone's back end. He's trying to go right down the middle of the court because he goes, hey, Riddenmeyer isn't where he should be. Now he doesn't get it, so he's got to take the speed up back from Riddenmeyer, takes it again, and then deflects in. Now Ben got a little bit lucky, and sometimes you are going to get lucky when your partner's, when your opponent is in the wrong spot. I love this. I'm just going to show you this is good play by Kawamoto. Watch after she hits this and the speed up comes. Watch how she moves back. She comes over, but back. Because she knows she's got to get back to help her teammate out. He's blocking from where she hit the ball. Why is he? Okay, so right now, even though he should be a little bit further over, Rindmeyer is the blocker because... Kawamoto hit the ball over here. And whoever is directly in front of the ball is now the blocker. That is Rindmeyer. So in blocker workhorse, that means that uh, Kawamoto has decided that she's the workhorse. So she's got to be back on this kind of angle and she's got to protect the lob. She's got to protect, she's got to get everything back here. That's a lot of court for her to do, but that is what it is, and that's why standing over to the side and thinking that in mixed doubles you only guard one-fourth of the court is absolutely wrong. It changes almost every time when you are hitting the ball. So she's back, which allows Rindmeyer to go after this ball. He doesn't worry about hitting his partner. Her, his partner has no interest in trying to get this ball. She's letting him attack it. Now, if he had been in the original better position I think he would have won this point because he would have already been over further this way which would have allowed him to hit more this way on the ball and actually put it away instead of being in this fight of just going into Ben John's body and trust me Ben gets lucky uh, but when he takes as many speed ups as he does he's gonna get a lot of them and he's not even trying to hit this ball hard back he's just I'm just deflecting it because you're now out of position so anyways great point i think there was a lot that we could learn on that one a lot of people would just see that point and say ah lucky hit um but uh, that's why we really slow things down because we really want you guys to learn from other pros mistakes okay let's jump into the next one waters to serve once again ben is going after Rittenmeyer on his drops. I can't really say if he's going to do that the entire game at this point, but I prefer, especially on this, when Rittenmeyer is running up, this is the one to choose. Once again, let's look here. Sees that Rittenmeyer is trying to keep Ben back, so Annalie Waters knows she can move up. Before impact, she has made it. I'm just really hammering this point home because – Kawamoto is so not doing it. Ari made it to zone two, turns and waits for her partner. Let's move forward a little bit. And then she's down. Ball's crossing the planet, down. So she sees that this is a good dink and he's going to let it drop and it's not coming. So she pauses, moves, and then stops. That's good. Okay. Ben comes on up and now we're in a dink battle. And Ben just misses the dink ben does a lot of these he comes even further over than a lot of people i think this is something that annalee waters and him have had lots of conversations about and it's just like hey that's how i get my blood pumping and i get a feel for the game in my opinion if you are not ben johns if you're not the best in the world this is definitely a ball that your doubles partner whether it's mixed doubles or same sex doubles you should be letting your partner take that ball because the ball is traveling to and into their body. It allows you to keep your court position better, and it's just going to be an easier dink, less likely in error by having you reach out and try and hit that back. Um, 
even the best in the world make errors. And so you're trying to cut down and give yourself the most likely possibility. Now, Ben Johns very rarely misses these, but he even misses these in these kind of games and matches. So a little miss there. And I just think statistical odds would be in the favor of letting Annalie Waters get that ball. Look how much earlier she is up there. She's here. She's set. Ball goes over. She's ready for split steps right here when the ball is going across the net. So she's ready to go either way on this ball. Look how far she even gets out of his way. So that's one where you just go, okay, go over to her. Ben is just very used to them trying to avoid hitting him the ball, and that's why he probably does that quite a bit often. Okay, Ben's turn to serve. I think he wanted to make up for that little error he had earlier. Okay, let's break this down. So both of them deciding to go for Ben. Why are they deciding to always be returning to Ben? Some people will be like, that's absolutely, we want to attack the weaker player, all this kind of stuff. What you are doing and why these pros are deciding to do that is, one, and this isn't the number one reason, but you are going to wear out this person more often by making them do more work. Okay, You wear them out, they start making mistakes. Number two, they're trying to keep him back. Look at him having to stay back longer. If you had hit to Annalie Waters, Ben would already be up here, and he would then be looking to attack either on a shake and bake or on a pop-up off of a drop. And so you are holding back the more aggressive, more powerful player when you return to them. And that is a strategy uh, that a lot of 3-5, 4-0, even some 4-5s uh, mess up on who should they actually be returning the ball to. It's not, oh, this person's a banger and I don't like that. Let's hit it away from him. What you want to be doing is whoever is going to be more powerful, more aggressive at the kitchen, you're trying to hold them back from the kitchen as long as possible. Okay, so this ball very short okay and bouncing high so ben goes for the speed up kind of puts it right between them gets rinmeyer making a completely wrong decision of going for his forehand on that speed up sees he's out of position and then ben johns is just going to keep attacking the open court so i could spend some time talking about this style of technique on his backhand um, which really allows him to cut the ball really hard to the right, but I don't think the footage and the like this angle really would help for you guys to understand. So hopefully we will get another one of those a little bit later. But what I really want to show you is, yes, I would say Kawamoto is late, and Rittenmeyer feels that, and so he steps into where she is now. She didn't get up there early enough. So let's take a look here when she impacts this ball. She hits it, and she's coming. She definitely ran it just a little slow. I'm not saying that she hesitated on hitting it. She hits it and runs, just not with enough urgency, especially for that short of a ball. And so the real issue here is the short ball and the lack of speed of getting up there so that her partner knows that she's got that space and not to worry about it. And then it's a complete miss hit by Rittenmeyer because the ball is further out than it should be for him. The one thing I'm also, let's just see this. Okay, that is the other issue. Okay, when he's had a couple come to his back end, so he's probably playing it a little bit safe. So this ball is almost down the middle, right? It's just slightly on that side. If the ball had been perfectly down the middle or anywhere on this side of this red line, Rittenmeyer should be here with his feet, complete straddle, and then willing to move this way if it's a backhand uh, drop. Uh, but that would make him have a much more powerful forehand in these situations because the ball just wasn't there. I think he felt he couldn't be that far over felt he needed to still guard against his uh, backhand. But this is the mistake, is just being slightly out of position. And Ben's going to take advantage of those. If he sees that you're not here, he's going to go up this line instead of going over there. 
So a um, couple errors that really accommodated to an easy point one by uh, Ben Johns there. Hopefully some things you guys can take away and learn from. Um, these are the kind of points you don't want to give your opponent is easy wins like that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Ben's turn to serve. He's just tied it up at 2-2. Two -two. That is a great hit by Ben, something he's really brought into his game in the last year to 18 months. Okay, so once again, he's gotten much softer on his serves. Definitely kind of stealing that from his brother Collins. There's not a lot on that ball. Just, hey, let's just get the point started. I'm just not going to miss a serve. He used to serve it harder and deeper in the box. Now, a little run around drop. Once again, going to Rinmeyer's backhand. And they've very quickly gotten up to the kitchen. And watch how effortlessly this is for Annalie Waters because she instantly moves forward. She gets to zone two. She pauses and waits sees it and then attacks gets the split step down so she's ready in case he comes at her now we're into a little bit of a dink and ben just sees the quality of Redmire's backhand is pretty poor and there's a clear reason why he's running around it um this is there's just no reason to have this much of a pop-up man that ball really is high now at impact, it is still a yellow ball. I do not want anyone to think that, oh, this was a green light ball. It is just slightly below the shoulder, but it's a high, high yellow ball. But Ben couldn't crush on it. He still had to hit it with enough spin that it came back down, and that's basically what he did. And it's, I mean, once again, that wasn't that far in. He hits it very vertically with lots of spin to have it come back down. But everything is wrong. Like, right here, Rinmeyer realizes, I just popped a ball up. It's it's coming back. But really never gets his feet set. Doesn't know which way it's going to go. Thought Ben was going to hit a hard kind of cross. And Ben sees him move and says, nope, I'm just going to hang it out there. Keep it on your backhand side. Uh, perfect decision by him. And perfect step in by him and Annalie Waters to be like, hey, look at that pop up. Let's go. So they're going to keep attacking Rinmeyer's backhand, especially in the dinks, if they're, if they're not going to be any stronger than that. Okay, let's move on to the next point. First time Ben has dropped over to Kawamoto. Now they're into a dink battle. Oh, Annalie Waters misses the Ernie. Let's see where this point breaks down. She almost got exactly what she wanted. Just backing it up here a little bit extra because there were some great dinks going on here. Okay, so number one, Kawamoto needs a coach. Someone to have her stop standing up and turning her shoulders completely this way when her partner is dinking. She's late on everything. Uh, that would be unbelievably frustrating to keep seeing that from my partner. Annalie Waters isn't doing that. There, look at Ben. She literally went around for her and gets her shoulders back and gets ready beforehand. So see how late. If, if she'd been ready earlier, she may have been able to take this ball, hit it harder, but I'm not saying that that's a very good attackable ball. But to have to do this many steps for Kawamoto on that shot is not giving you a high percentage of winning them. Here we go. And here's the lob. It's a very bad lob by <laughs> Water. She obviously wants to hit that ball much, not a whole lot higher, but a lot deeper. And this is the one thing I will say, because on this ball, uh, let me just draw this out. 
people are like, be right on that kitchen line. Kawamoto is the workhorse in this situation because the ball's over in this part of the court, right? And so that makes Rinmeyer, that makes him the blocker. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. I'm just circling Rinmeyer when I say it because a lot of people aren't going to know who's who. So Rinmeyer is the blocker. His responsibility is to guard right here. Okay, that means Kawamoto at this moment knows that she's got everything over here, everything back here, back here. That is her zone that she's got to cover. Everything inside this that I'm coloring red. So when this ball switches to this lob, watch Rittenmeyer. He thinks, but then doesn't go really anywhere. If he was going to go anywhere, he was just going to take and go back to zone two. But Kawamoto could hit it, so he didn't even have to do that. But she was already ready to go back nice and early on that ball. Now, what I didn't like he uh, was this much space. I think he thought she was going to smash it more down the middle, and that's why he moved over and then had to recover. So this is kind of a breakdown on positioning and those kind of things. Not a bad backhand dink. Obviously kept it very low, very soft, and in the kitchen. And that's why Annalie Waters was late to it. Pretty aggressive, Ernie, to go from midcourt all the way to offense. This is what we talk about. You're on defense here, you're at midcourt, and she tries to go all the way in one hit to offense, to through defense, through neutral, into offense, and hit a winner. Very tough to do. And so I would have said be more patient. That wasn't actually the – Ernie ball or a likely Ernie ball because you're late to it. Now, if she wasn't all the way back here on the back edge of the court, yeah, she could have uh, probably gotten there in time and hit that shot. But the, it's her starting point is what prevented it and those kind of things. So a lot of great play, a lot of great dinks, a lot of good gets on this one. But after hitting a bad lob, you're on defense. You got it back. Hey, let's get back to the kitchen. Let's get back to neutral. Let's reset this point and, and be patient. There wasn't a lot of patience there, and she went for it, and she knows it right when she did it. Of That was a mistake. Okay. Hope you guys learned something there. Let's move on to the next one. It is now Kawamoto's turn to serve. Good reaction by Ben on that netball, another netball. Let's back this one on up. Okay, Kawamoto's turn to serve. Serving to Ben. They're obviously stacking. Ben goes to uh, Rindmeyer. I think he's going to do that a lot to try and hold him back. And now they're playing the point. Ben realizes, hey, okay, you've hit a good drop that's a quality drop to my backhand i'm conceding that you've made to the kitchen line and hits a dink rinmeyer makes an aggressive decision to try and hit the winner or keep ben on the defensive goes off the tape and ben gets it back let's see here a little more tape yeah and basically rinmeyer's backhand again not having the type of touch that you want. So why is that happening? Now, this isn't the best frame for it, but I really want you guys to see this. Watch how far back his paddle is here, and it's going to keep moving back this way. It literally moves so far back it goes out of frame, and that's what you really have. Now, did the ball go off the net, and it's hard to adjust? Absolutely. But he comes way far back with the ball, and there's the swing. Okay. See how he swings at it instead of using his leg to push off and move his body forward? He just gets – and the way you can tell this, especially when you have slower film, and we can even tell it on this one, it's the knee angle. And I'm going to leave that red right there. And now watch these next several frames. Watch if that knee shifts. If the knee – releases it's like doing a squat you're releasing the power you have in your leg 
into the ball, and what is moving the ball forward is your leg muscles. You're hitting it with your leg and not your arm. And what he does is he doesn't move his leg hardly at all and just swings with the arm. What that does is it, one, makes you way less consistent, but two, because you're swinging, you're normally now, you're not dinking, you're going to hit the ball too far, which he does. Ben is low and ready, impacts his ball from below it, and just, he's not even really hitting it, he's just putting it back into his body, and look at that swing again at it. Just swings, puts all that power into the ball, and the ball is just flying out instead of having control, getting the ball out in front of your body. Also, oh man, this, there's so much in this match, uh, and we normally don't get this amount per point, so I apologize that these are going very long, but I really, this is just quality footage for everybody to learn from. And here's the big thing that I want to also point out. Look at this ready position. There was just a, a TikTok video about changing your paddle to be more on the um, backhand side, and then that would be better, and the film doesn't agree with that. So the number one thing is if you're on this backhand side, you are in a defensive position all the time. You're going to be able to put away less, much less balls. But the bigger thing on this one is is Rindmeyer doesn't get to a proper ready position with the paddle out in front of him because look how the paddle is completely in his body. He had time, not as much time as he would like from this, so he swings. Look how far out the paddle is in front of his body. Paddle is completely out in front of his body, and he takes his paddle and puts it all the way back into his body, and that's his. this is his ready position now for this shot. And then there's nowhere to go. You're a spring that's completely coiled, you can't absorb anything and clearly can't, and so then that ball sails long. He needs to, if you if you have your hand out nice in front, keep it out in front and be ready for the next one. Look at, I guess the greatest comparison is, let's look at Annalie Waters right here across. Her paddle is nice, even, straight in front. She can go backhand, forehand, and it's in front of her perfectly straight she's not favoring the backhand side she's not favoring the forehand side she's got that paddle at 12 o'clock um i will find a uh when we get a camera angle to explain what i mean by 12 o'clock for those who are this is their first time i will do that but man a lot of information to take away from that point a lot of things to learn the reason we do these videos we uh we are not bashing on any pro they are amazing athletes we appreciate this footage but we want to learn from their mistakes and improve your game through them um, and that's what we try and do okay we're moving on to the next point Ooh, interesting point there okay so this is a little bit of okay so Rindmeyer is getting a chance to serve to Annalie Waters, they're stacking. Anna, whoa, sorry about that, guys. That jumped. Okay, so he serves Annalie Waters, and Annalie uh, hits it back to Kawamoto. And Kawamoto does several bad mistakes. So she steps into the court and then realizes she stepped too far in, so she's hitting this completely leaning back off her back foot, which what does that do? Not allow her to move forward on her drop also because she does this lift motion with her right leg that ugly ugly form lift motion and there's some uh players that are 303540 they do this right leg lift all the time on their drops and that is one of the things that is holding them back because this loses consistency with your drops because if you lift this leg what people think is that it's the leg this right leg that is affecting them it's actually not. What is occurring is what I want you to see is how far deep that ball gets into Kawamoto's body. When you lift that right leg, if you are left-handed, it's your right leg. If, it, if you're right-handed, it's your left leg. But if you lift that opposite leg to hit a shot like this, what you're doing is you're letting the ball come to you and you get the ball further into your body, which creates less consistency, less control, less accuracy. 
And so that's the one of the main problems with this technique. You do get more height on the ball and you think, okay, I'm going to lift this ball up. Problem is you, this exact happens where then you're not getting the ball to drop where you want it. Um, and then the other opponent's able to just hit down on it. So green light ball, Ben John does what he does best. He just smashes it right down the middle. He gets another, I would say, yeah, that's green at impact. And just for those who are watching for the first time, we'll do this. I'm going to pause it right there. So yellow is your shoulder and above to your knee. This entire area is a yellow ball. Why is it a yellow ball? Because you have to get the ball to go from low to high back over the net. Okay, what's a red light ball? Red light balls are everything below it, knee and below. And unfortunately, with our setup here, I have to use blue because of green screens. So blue represents green. Anything hit in this area is a green ball. And that means you can hit basically directly down on the ball into the court. And on this one, it's real close, but it appears that Ben is getting to hit directly. He snaps that wrist, puts a nice topspin on it, it's going straight down. And it definitely with that hitting that shallow on the court, he's not hitting up on that ball. Okay. So then he gets a third. Okay, here we go. So one of the issues here, when you've hit a bad drop, and Rindmeyer makes you realize, oh, man, this is a bad drop. He stops and pauses. He was running in unencumbered and wasn't planning on stopping in zone two. Major issue for a lot of people that they make this mistake. He should have been already knowing he was going to pause at zone two, whether it was a good drop or bad drop, and been down. Luckily for him, uh, Ben hits it back to Kawamoto. She essentially tries to hit. That looks like a drive to me or a drip. That does not look like a very soft drop. Obviously, she was trying to get the paddle on it, but definitely wasn't really soft in any of that. Once again, on her back heels. And then this is very clearly a drive from Rindmeyer. The logic here is just nuts. He basically hits two more drives. They're not making any progression forward. And so when he does hit a drop that he they should have made some progress. I mean, it's not a great drop, but it wasn't that bad. They could have gotten up to zone two, the middle, middle space there. They don't, and so they're just sitting back here and getting teed off on. And once again, you can see on this smash, Ritten, uh, Rinmeyer tries to speed this up. He was clearly going for a drive. He's not blocking that. He's not trying to drop that ball. He's now trying to tennis swing and power himself out of a bad position. So what he was doing here is, Rinmeyer is, it was, I'm all the way in the back. I'm clearly on defense. They are back here. You are on defense. Just for those of you who want to know, if you are in anywhere basically from here back, you're on defense. This little itty bitty space at the kitchen line, you are neutral until you then get a green offensive ball. So anything in here, if you're choosing to try and speed this up, you're trying to skip all of that distance for defense, skip neutral and go all the way to offense, and you're most likely going to make mistakes so ben john's pretty happy about that one his turn to serve let's move on to the next one okay rudmeyer is clearly changing a little bit of his game plan he's going to start driving a lot more so i'm probably gonna have a lot more opportunities to talk about what that does to you know amateur players when you get in that mindset what that does Rinmeyer gets away with one. So Ben, once again, dropping to Rinmeyer, who has now decided to run around it, leaves this huge hole. I can tell you that you leave that big of a hole over and over again. It's not going to go well for you long term. But so Annalie Waters sees this, and she tries to go directly for offense because she sees that hole. You see where she's trying to put that ball. She just doesn't get it down because she swings hard at it and she's late. When you swing, try and go hard at it and you're late, her feet or footwork is late here. See how 
before she was getting and she was already there. She had split step when it was coming over the net. So she's late on this. Therefore, she lets the ball get into her body. The ball rises and the ball goes out. And so that's why I talk about you need to be down at this point. Whether he decides to run around or not, you need to be down and ready because he ran around and sped it up. So you have to be ready for that. Let's back this up. One of the things that occurred here, it's one like the first time in this entire game where the ball sailed over to Annalie Water. So see how she goes back. Maybe I'm hitting that. So she didn't have her natural, okay, you take that ball. I'm going to move forward. I think if Ben was moving to his left because of the stacking, and that's kind of what causes like, oh, okay, I got to stay here for that ball because she didn't know if he was going to go further to his left. That was a good return. I really like that return. A little deeper would have been even better, but I really like that return and that decision by Kawamoto. That's exactly where you want to be hitting it when your opponent's stacking. You are not trying to hit it on the middle line, this line. That's where the default where you see all the, you know, 101 tutorials that like return the ball down the middle on your opponents. Well, Yes, that is true when your opponents aren't stacking. When they are stacking, that line shifts over to here because this person was standing here, this person standing over here, and their natural tendency is to be moving this direction, which puts them right. If she'd hit the ball here, clearly Ben's ball, right? And so that's why that line shifts. So great job by her. Nice strategy playing the game the way the game should be played. And there is the error. The error is footwork, trying to cover too much ground too early. But she definitely, there was a chance that Anna Lee Waters was going to get that. If she'd gotten down a little bit earlier, I truly believe she would have gotten this ball, hit it right into the open court, and won that point by uh, Rittenmeyer deciding to run around it. We'll see if she adjusts that in coming points. Okay, Anna Lee Waters' turn to serve. A little aggression by Annalie Waters on this one. Let's see if that's where it broke down on the point mistake. Okay, her serve. Very short return. Ball's so low, Ben makes the right decision by just doing a nice drop shot. He moves up because he knows how good of a drop shot he hit. Annalie Waters kind of stays back. That's fine. They're doing a nice staggered right here. He has plenty of space to take that ball. A lot of spin on that ball. Watch that ball bounce dead to the right. He just puts it right back there. I actually think Rittenhauer was a little surprised he went back that. He could have uh, earned that ball potentially, but he's being a little cautious. And then Anna comes up. Okay, so we got a bounce speed up. Like I said, we keep track of these because normally it's a very bad decision and so this point as we already know goes to the Rittenmeyer Kawamoto team so this is attempt one and so they're 0 for 1 for Waters on doing a bounce speed up because you can't hit the ball as hard as you want to and it's just rising right into the body of your opponent they just have to swing basically down at the ball so which occurs Ben's now on the defense Pops it up to Kawamoto. And they're now basically in a hands battle. They're completely out of where they should be and or body position. Ben gets a shockingly number of these back, which he does. Yeah. After this one, let's go back here. After Anley Waters sped this up and he took a direct shot down, Ben should have taken off. Like, this is where it's real bad. It's that. Choosing not to let this reset. Speeding up that ball right at your opponent. Then had the next two, three shots where you're not in position. You can't get back in position. So Ben does a good job of taking the heat that Annalie Waters brought. Like, that's good. But it's this second one of like, okay, let's go. 
and not b- resetting that ball is where I believe the mistake really is that led to everything. Now, do I think that this was a good speed up by Annalie Waters? Absolutely not. So if you want to put the blame on her, I would also kind of agree with that, uh, that the point broke down at this decision, and that was a bad decision. Uh, but Ben kind of compounded it by also trying to speed this ball up that he could have slowed down, gotten back to neutral, and then probably have won the point. Okay, that was a good point. Hopefully we learned a lot from that. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, back over to Kawamoto to serve. Ooh, let's back that up. Did that really miss? Mm, it was really close. I can't tell if that is post the bounce because there's that little bit of a shadow like it's coming back up. So to me, based off this, it looks like it had bounced in and was rising past that line. I think that ball was in. Now, clearly called out by both of them, called out with confidence. I'm not so confident with that call, and uh, they didn't challenge it, unfortunately. I would have liked to have seen that on the replay. Okay, let's back that up and take a whole an entire look at it. Even Ben Johns and Early Waters probably called some tight lines. Uh, so if you're playing against them, I would definitely, when you see one of those, challenge it. Okay, good decision. Annalee Waters, I'm loving what Annalee Waters is doing here because she sees – Kawamoto running in late. She's late on all of these. Look at this. Okay, I just can't help this. She serves the ball. Ball's clearly not coming to her at this point. She is not going to hit this ball. It's nowhere even close to her side. She doesn't move in at all. Doesn't move in now, doesn't move in now, doesn't move in now, doesn't move in now. So we've established that from other videos watching the great technique of Annalie Waters, which is one of the nice things of having this dichotomy of the two teams what you should do and shouldn't do so very easy for you to learn from now she's just sitting with her partner back when you don't want to be line to line with your partner you want to be one zone ahead or behind your partner until you get to the kitchen line so she's just standing back there making no progress making him do all his work so then it's like oh now we hit a drop now let's rush rush in the other thing is is like he drove, decided to drive this ball. Like, if you're ch- choosing to drive ball, shake and bake time, right? So you have to have already moved up to get the benefit of that. This return back is not that low. If she had been low ready, she could have pounced on that ball and been more aggressive. Okay, so anyway, so Annalie Water sees her coming and not have her feet set. She's rushing. So when people are rushing, what do you do? You speed the ball up into their body. Exactly what you do because she doesn't even have time to get out of the way. Whether that ball is going to be in or out, there is no decision, no possibility for her to do. So she has to hit this ball, and she hits it back, which is high. So Annalie Waters speeds it up again. The one thing I don't like is, at this point, the cross court. So I think Annalie Waters probably should have taken this ball and sped it up at Rittenmeyer instead of Kawamoto. And I'm not so sure that that ball is out. But basically, they won the point by just attacking Kawamoto and the ball floating just a little bit. I personally, from this point, I like everything that Kawamoto did. But the biggest thing we can learn from this point is her sitting, like, she's got to be moving up to zone two here. She should be at zone two here so that she's ready for the speed up. Rindmeyer likes to hit third shot drives. If he's hitting drives or drops, it doesn't matter. you got to be at zone two to help your team get up to the kitchen line and be ready. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Also, okay, Ridmeyer's turn to serve. <laughs> Been having a little fun on that poach. Okay, coming all the way across. Let's take a look at this, see what we can learn from it. Yeah, he just sees that that ball is really high. Okay, so we talked about this in an earlier video, but I'm going to just mention it again because it's a very short point. Watch the right leg of Kawamoto 
and how she lets this ball get into her body, and Ben immediately sees it. this ball is going to be high, and abandons everything else to go get it. He even attacks cross court so that Kawamoto had more time to get that ball back. But Ben basically is like, I can put the, this ball so high, I can get a green ball. I'm going to attack that. Let's go. He even jumps the corner. That's how far off he cut that angle and put hard spin into that ball. And second off, Kawamoto, because she's lifting that leg, look at all of her weight going backwards. So then she's not even ready to get what wasn't that hard of a putaway ball. She's just in the absolute wrong position. If you are utilizing that technique, I can't stress how much you need to get a partner or a ball machine and go out and drill drops by keeping the ball in front of your body and not leaning back. You should be leaning forward when you're hitting a drop shot. I'm sure we will get um, some footage of a proper drop shot of the, how you lean forward, keep it in front of your body. But this is the absolute wrong technique. You do not want that. And we've at least seen two of them by Kawamoto so far already in this match. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I try not to talk about technique at the pro level, um, but the stark contrast in this game already is something I just feel is going to be more helpful for you guys to be able to learn from. Okay, let's back this point up. That wasn't too pretty. Okay. Drops to Rindmeier's forehand. So the one thing I can say is he comes over well. He held the line. So we talked about earlier another point. When should his feet be here? And when should they be where they're at? I'm going to do it in blue, which is here. And it all is dependent upon where the ball is. And so when the ball is in this area, when it comes back into this area, that's when you need to be blue. I'll go over it with yellow. So that's when you should be yellow. If you return the ball and the ball is in this zone, that's when your doubles partner, I don't care if it's same sex or mixed that that's when you got to start moving a little bit further over. And what you really want, what really helps make the court smaller on your opponent is returning the ball on this side instead of in this, and then you can come all the way over here, and then your other partner is here. And that's really where you're going to start getting benefit and start seeing easier points to win. It doesn't matter who is on the other side of which one. That's what's going to make it better. But anyways, so Rinhauer moves very well. This shot... Annalee overruns it because she thinks Ben's going to hit a better drop. So going from back here, she runs past. The ball is going over the net. She should already be down and then makes a very bad decision because her body and footwork are not ready. Super late to it. Makes a completely wrong decision. I don't even understand what her thought was on attacking that. Um, that's her second one really in this match so far where – She's further back than she thinks she is, and she thinks she can get that ball. And Ben Ben's feet is, look at this, he goes up. He makes almost no forward progress. He's set and ready, easily ready to take it. Could have continued the point on. Um, and so he's a little like, okay, well, no big. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, but, yeah, that's very clear mistake on Annalie Waters. Not even that good of a shot for a winner, just a complete uh, decision mental error on deciding I, I want to try and get that ball and that's because you're running unencumbered uh, when what you should be doing is taking progress and getting to the kitchen line you're on defense you're still like look where Annalie Waters is she's you know potentially six feet or more from the kitchen line you're on defense and you're trying with one stroke to go jump past defense past neutral and into offense it's not going to work out even for the best in the world. Okay, moving on to the next point. Uh, Water's turn to serve. Let's 
Ooh, okay. Let's take a look at this point. I do like Ben's attack on Rinmeyer's backhand because of the technique form. I don't know if Ben has noticed that, uh, but he's definitely taking advantage of the improper form by Rittenmeyer because he's just getting them all locked into his body. Once you see your opponent do this, with that's how they hit their backhand dinks, get ready. I think Annalie right here was, was trying to make up for that past shot as a little, but they're both basically seeing this technique by Rittenmeyer's backhand and saying, dude, he's going to pop up a lot of these. Let's just go. Okay, so she has to make a split-second decision. Ben gives it to her. They're all bunched up. Says, okay, Dinka, let's get back into this. So she goes cross court, goes to Ben's backhand back. Ben just takes it all the way across the court, no big deal. Right here, I'm very happy with Kaomoto and Rydmeyer. Like, their court position is good. It's even better than Ben and Annalie Waters right now. Annalie literally stayed over on this side out of Ben's way. And here is, <laughs> I wish I had that TikTok video so I could literally show it in this clip. I just, you know, cut it in. Your ready position is 100% backhand. Well, then you should hit the backhands all better. You shouldn't ever miss this backhand because you're literally not even ever going to do a forehand. But it's so far into your body that you can't go anywhere with it and you can't even get this. And so this ready position form is really, really needs to be changed by Rittenmeyer. And the other thing that I say is if you see yourself, let's say you film yourself and you see yourself doing this, that's when you got to work on, I need to get low and I need to get the paddle further out away from my body so that I can be ready for it. Watch Ben's paddle. It doesn't go back towards his body, and then he goes out and gets it. So we're just going to, in contrast, now we're going to just watch Ben. I'm going to just gonna do a couple points. So he hits a backhand dink. Rittenmeyer just hit a backhand dink. The paddle is well out in front of his body. He comes back around, and the paddle stays out in front of his body this entire time, way far away from his belly button, so that he's ready for the next one. Stays out in front of his body with it again. And then he can attack. And Rydmeyer paddle is all on. It's literally almost resting on his hip. I've seen very few people have I ever seen it playing in a semifinal match where this is where their paddle is at, especially at the kitchen. It's uh, impressive that they got this far. Uh, shows his true athletic ability. But this is just not going to win you a lot of points when you're playing against Ben and Annalie Waters. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I really I don't like spending this much time on form, but I think this match, there's just so much that you guys can take away from it from improper technique. Normally, you don't have this level of improper technique at a semifinal PPA match, and so I just think that in this video, you can really take that and learn from it. Okay, so... Rydmeyer just, because of his technique, just hit one into the net. Let's just get back to this point. Okay, so the camera is obviously on Kawamoto, uh, who's returning the serve. Annalie Waters serves it. Just want to clear that up. So it's a third shot drop by Ben. Goes to, I'm going to slow it down here. Goes to uh, Rydmeyer, who does a little cut backhand. Uh, dink across court. Ben gets it, and then Rimmer pops the heck up out of this ball. There's a really big soft pop-up, very defensive dink. He lets the ball get completely behind him, and so this is kind of, I'll call this like two number two of bounce speed up by Waters. Remember, she lost the first one, and then they win the second one. So Annalie Waters at this point is one for two on bounce speed ups on the final point and that's because the ball never gets back down now that ball in my opinion was going to sail out Kawamoto should have just gotten out of the way 
I don't think she's gotten out of the way of a single speed up at her this entire match. Um, and that is coming from her standing up too tall and being late and keep moving her feet like this. Like she's doing all these constant micro adjustments, which then doesn't allow her to really get out of the way. Um, and so when she swings hard back, the ball is coming very soft. She doesn't make clean contact with this at all. Look at it. She basically frames it right there, frames it at the bottom of her paddle. Ball floats. Ben just speeds it up. And once again, if I can't, I can't stress this enough, look at Ridden Meyer's paddle. It's in his stomach, all backhand 100%, and therefore you're a coiled spring. You have no control. He swings out at it, and it's just sailing away. Um, if I could get the copyright authority to put uh, a little Enya sailing away music on it, that's what we would do right there. <laughs> And it's all based off of how Rinmeier is positioning himself. And he's just basically because of that technique, he's lost the last two points, unfortunately. So I know I'm harping on something. Unfortunately, it's probably going to get talked about throughout this entire video. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like um, doing that because it takes off the focus of what actually occurred and why a point broke down. Shocking when the pet you get the paddle out earlier in front of you, you can hit winners. But anyways, let's go in and see where this point broke down. Okay, so Anna to serve. They're stacking. This time, I like it, going still back at Ben. Uh, ben is going back at Riddenmeyer. He runs around it, gets back. Ben does a defensive dink. Let's see where he was positioned. Yeah, so Ben is running too far on this point. That's what causes him to pop this up. So ball is crossing the planet. That I would say Ben should stop right about here. Take a note. So let's see. Ball is traveling. I'm going to say it crosses the plane of the net right there. This is a two-dimensional, unfortunately, and so hard to see. But basically, he should be getting down right here and get ready for the next ball. He decides to run past it, and so then this becomes a much, much harder shot. So he pops that ball up. Look at the height of that over that net right there. I got to take this red line off one second. And so that allows that speed up. Beautiful forehand by Ridmeyer. That is clearly his best part of his game. So he's got a bounce speed up off of a high ball. I think they're one for one, if my memory serves correct. But he doesn't actually get that as a winner. So he takes a shot. Ben, very clear reset on this. Doesn't attack, doesn't whatever, just soft hands. Back very short into the kitchen, allows himself to move up. Beautiful, beautiful attack shot. I don't think Ben was expecting that one. So almost a little bit of a sucker ball by Rinmeyer. And when Ben hit that a little bit harder to try and attack, Rinmeier was ready and moving back to his position. I think Ben thought he was going to go down the middle. So, yeah, he did. He was moving. He goes, oh, he's going to come down the middle on me. And he just crossed him up, went to his back shoulder. Beautiful shot there. So this, this really breaks down off of this spot right here you're on the defensive and ben is really trying to get back to neutral from here this is defense i'm gonna get slammed on look how far back ben and annalee waters do this is the one thing that people don't talk enough about when they are on the defense they are already back a good three feet look at this both of them three feet off the kitchen line they know the ball is coming hard they want to give themselves more time they get low. Look at that. In sync together. It's just beautiful. They're both like she even turns. She doesn't even have to turn, but she's literally turned and, and ready in the, because the ball may come to her, right? Just look at that. Just beautiful. So they're both just ready to reset the ball so they can get up to the kitchen line. Then Ben steps up, gets ready. And yes, he does not hit. Kind of hits this sucker ball a little too soft. And requires Rinmeyer to hit one of the best shots of the game right there to get a winner. I love this point. Probably the best point we've gotten a chance to look at during this game. 
Okay, Kawamoto's turn to serve. Okay, once again, make no progress, but I believe Annalie Waters hit it out. They immediately challenge. And so that's the one thing. Just a note, Annalie Waters and Ben Johns have no problem challenging out calls. You should challenge them as well. I think we're going to, I'm going to try and speed it. Yeah, we're going to commercial. Hold on. I'm just going to get all the way through this. Let's see what happened here. Yep, it was out. And we had, went through that challenge. And now moving on, the game will start back up. So um, I'm not going to back all the way up to that because it. the one thing is the play by uh, Kawamoto and Renauer on that was not great. It was just kind of a pure miss, and sometimes you get lucky by getting one more ball back over. It barely missed. Obviously, that's why they challenged it. Um, so let's move on to another point where we can kind of get in and see some other things we can learn from than hoping your opponent misses. Okay. Kawamoto to serve here. Very short return, so big issue there on the short return. So that gets Kalmoto teeing off on the ball, but she doesn't take any ground again. That's making it much harder for them. She basically doesn't move up until her her teammate does, which I really don't really like. Ben kind of pops that one up a little bit, but once again, all he's trying to do, and Kalmoto staying back, if she's going to keep doing that, they're going to keep doing this where they're just going to hit her feet and make her make a decision. Are you going to volley it or are you going to let it bounce? It goes completely into her body. She lets it bounce. Ball comes up. Ben makes the bad decision to speed up this ball. This is a clear yellow ball, and he speeds it up technically across court. So when you're speeding up a ball, you want to go in front of your body. You want to attack straight on. Anywhere in here would be fine. He technically... He's technically on this side, and he's tagging across here. This allows your opponent more time. I'm just going to draw this out really simply on why are you getting more time. So it's just like a triangle. The longest distance of a triangle, any triangle, if these were, if this was a perfect triangle, this is the shortest side. So classic like three, four, five, like we all learned in school distance so if this was three inches four inches five inches then you can change that to three feet four feet five feet whatever it is so when you were attacking cross court that ball is having to travel further which means it is slowing down significantly when getting to your opponent even though he is up there at the net and I think Ben had to flick this and attack cross court because he impacted the ball so low so he speeds up a yellow ball takes that risk right into the forehand of Rittenmeyer which is the best part of his game, and he puts it away. So big mistake there for Ben Johns on being a little too aggressive and attacking a ball he shouldn't have attacked. And Rindmeyer is definitely warming up their game, and they've gotten two easy points. Not very often you get easy points against Ben and Annalie Waters. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so I think there's actually quite a bit here to learn from. Okay, so Kawamoto serves to Ben. They are, in my opinion, doing it right, returning to uh, Ridmeyer because, one, he wants to speed it up. And so when you're returning to a team and you're stacking, one, serving to the side. Okay, so Annalie Waters is here. She's coming in from this side. It is easier to have the return come to this person because the drive will be straight on. I'm going to change some colors here. So one of the best things of returning to this side is when it's coming straight on, it's easier for this person to see the ball and do a good volley return. Number two, if that person likes speeding up, this is a very difficult shot to keep in the court and not hit it too long. Okay, and so if you're playing with someone who really likes to do backhand drops, 
that's where it can be difficult. So if a person you know is always going to drop, that's the only time where you would really want to say, okay, hey, let's not do that. But for this one, you got two things going in your favor. You got Rittenhauer wants to speed it up his forehand, so hit it to him. Two, you want to keep Rittenhauer off that kitchen line. And if you're hitting it to him, Kawamoto's not even moving up. So she's staying back just because he's back. So the only person you should be returning the ball to over and over and over again is Rittenmeyer right now, whether he's speeding it up or dropping it. So he speeds it up, and it easily takes it, hits it back, and then we get a fifth shot drop. It is a good drop. Backo almost, I mean, we're almost playing the same point we did before. So Ben hits it over. She tries speeding it up from a defensive position because she saw that space on the court. Ben gets back with his impressive skill, knows exactly where she's going to hit it. Like, you can just see him anticipate this. He puts it back very soft again because he's on the defensive. Now he's just moving along. And now we're definitely into a battle. So basically, like, right around here, you'd say we are neutral. You could say that's a little bit of a defensive dink, especially for Rindmeyer. But I would say this is this is as neutral as you're going to get with Ben and Annalie Waters. We have a neutral game. So just a little soft. And the big mistake here is this is not a ball you want to attack. One, you don't want to attack it with your backhand. Two, because Rindmeyer, and this is actually probably the biggest, closest frame we've gotten, once again, with his paddle not being out where it should be, He's late getting to this ball, so the ball drops lower than he wants it. He was also slightly off the kitchen line. And also, that ball is going to have no pace on it when he sped it up, if he'd even gotten it over. Ben was actually ready for him to go to his backhand side again, and he puts it in the net. So let's just look at the impact point of this ball. I'm just going to freeze it right there. Let's take his knee, knee straight out. Ball is clearly below his knee, so he's even trying to speed up. I know you guys appreciate it more when I do this for the colors to make sense. He is speeding up a red ball, so I'm going to draw it in red to make it very clear. The ball is in this area. You do not want to speed up red balls. You'll most likely hit him out or hit him in the net, and this one went in the net. So um, I think that's the biggest takeaway in this. You were neutral with Ben Johns and Annalie Waters. If you're neutral with your opponent, the goal in that situation is to force your opponent to give you a green ball. That is what you're actually trying to do. You are trying to hit shots that get your green ball, not speed up red balls and hope. Okay, let's back this one up. Rindmeyer's turn to serve. So, great job, great return. Another awful technique, Dink by or drop by Kawamoto sorry to be so critical but we've watched these the entire game Ben Johns can just tee off on it and he tees off on it again points over and so I know I've talked about this before I'm not going to drag this one out you can't be lifting up that opposite leg this and letting the ball come into your body just in case you haven't watched our other videos um, I'm just not I can't spend more time on it here but that is the absolute wrong technique uh for drop shots and uh there are tutorials on how to hit drop shots if you currently hit a drop shot like this where you lift that leg up and hit them you definitely want to work on that technique change that you will be much more consistent okay let's move on to the next point trying to speed it up here for you guys Okay. Served by Ben Johns. Decent return, not super deep. Ben just wants the same similar side. He lets it get into his body. I guess the big thing I can take away from this point is even though Ben misses this ball, it hits the table a bit, you can see from this one, as opposed to the previous point, he's leaning forward into this ball, and he just lets it get a little too close to his body. But this is the proper technique of – leaning forward and keeping the ball in front of you where you're going to hit them. And this is the first or second drop Ben has missed this entire match. And so that is more the technique you want. You want to be leaning forward using your legs and then utilizing that power. And he, I think he just hits it on the frame. I just don't think it's great contact 
Uh, there was obviously also a little bit of spin on that ball, but this is much better technique that you want. It's not always great to utilize that as an example of proper technique when they miss, but at least when we're in reference to the uh, previous point. Okay, and Lee Waters turn to serve. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, a little bit of a heartbreaker there. Okay, let's take a look at this again. So hitting a good ball, keeping Ben back, but what is occurring right here, just because you've seen it from the other side, Anna's already almost to zone two before Ben even impacts the ball, leaving that red line there so you can see she now gets to it before the ball is even crossed. Look at them how far up they get in one drop. I would like her to get down a little bit earlier. She's getting a little bit lazy, but I just wanted to show you that. That's in stark contrast to what is occurring on the other side. So basically, Rinn Meyer sees them being this aggressive and moving up, so he's going to test them. So he does a uh, bounce speed up. I don't really count those as bounce speed ups when the ball is that far back because you're not all at the kitchen line and you're trying to keep you're just trying to make your opponent make decisions and so I know that is one but this point will continue on well past that so let's get into this so he's trying to test them make them make a decision as they've their feet aren't set so when you see your opponent's feet not set that's the time to speed it up into them to see if they're going to make a mistake Anna does an attempted speed up back. Kawamoto obviously reset. Resets again. So two good resets and she retakes her position. So I like everything Kawamoto has done on this point. And the one thing that I can tell you is if we went back and looked at the first four or five points of the match, she would be standing here when her opponent, when her partner was here. And she was giving up this entire middle. She has done a much better job, in, at least in this point, of when her partner does this run around, see how she split steps and moves towards that middle line. I think she could actually even be a little bit further over, in my personal opinion. But she's done a much better job of covering that space because and getting closer to her partner in this. So she does two good, great resets. Ben just does a reset dink back to her. And... Her form really breaks down on this. So this is the big area that we've seen not occurring on her split steps. So she's covering this ground back, but look at her feet right now at this moment. She's not set. And one of the reasons she's not is because she's having to come so far based off of where she hit that dink. She's having to come all, basically all the way to the middle, and she's trying to come all the way up. So what she probably should have done in this scenario, not having enough time, she should have moved just this direction. I don't blame people when you hit a reset, you feel it's good, you see your opponent letting it bounce and you're trying to get down. The, but the thing that you have to be able to do when you take that ground is you have to be prepared to be able to take a step back. And she's, her feet basically go back together. She split steps here and because the camera angle changes, we're, it almost feels like we're losing a couple frames, and her feet are very close together there. She tries stepping back. I really do feel like we lost a couple frames there, and that's the big issue. If you split step late when the ball's coming back, your number one issue is then being able to come back because your body, you can see all of her body split step, all of it's coming forward. All of her weight's forward. It's on the front of her feet, and now you got to reverse and step back. She tries keeping the ball in front of herself, and she hits the tape because it's the high part of the net. In this scenario, the big issue, in my opinion, is the fact that she kept she went back to Ben John's backhand. One, he could have run around and potentially earned this ball. Where you want to go, I'm not a big proponent of recommending when you're on the defense of trying to hit these very hard shots. Also, that allows for ATPs on this entire corner. Where you want to put the ball is soft here. You're going for this person's 
left leg if they are uh, right-handed. And so this is the box you are looking for. It'll give you, even though Ben John's forehand is over there, it is giving you more distance, a wider area of margin to keep the point going and then work towards getting a uh, pop-up or error or forcing your opponent to give you a ball that you want. You're hitting a very small window right here going on the tight side when you're stepping back and errors even for the pros occur more in that range so i think that's the, the big takeaway on this point over almost anything else okay i'm just backing up one last time taking a quick look yeah besides the proper form of how to move up with your partner once we get into this point where everybody's now at the kitchen and doing good resets and battling, it's really the mental decision of where she's trying to put this ball and being late with her split step to be able to then move backwards and take it. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Uh, Anna Lee Waters' turn to serve here. Let's just speed it up. Okay, and Anna Lee Waters' turn to serve. Here we go. Okay, let's back that up and analyze and see where that broke down. Decent serve, good return back. Obviously, this is, I think, Annalie Waters had been so used to them hitting it back to Ben Johns that she kind of got caught. Look at it, you don't want to be running backwards. But the one thing that Ben Johns does, and this is what I talk about sometimes, and it doesn't get covered enough, at this level at the 450 two classes or, or, or any of our 450 level uh, classes is this walk in by Ben Johns like watch he sees balls not coming to him he knows it right there so he just makes sure hey my teammates got this and he's walking he's not running he's not out of control he's not pacing look how he walked <laughs> all the way up to the kitchen line. One, that saves you a lot of energy. And I talk to people all the time, like you can walk pickleball. When you're doing it right, the game really slows down. Look how slow this game is being played by Ben Johns. Now, he sees that ball clear, it's gonna bounce, and then he split steps. Now, is he probably a little late on that split step? Yeah, but he's also gonna be a little extra aggressive. So he splits steps when the ball is about to bounce see how it, it hasn't hit the ground yet it's one thing so he's in between split stepping here and here so it's past the plane of the net so that's where for a good example for you know amateur players people who are getting used and are always late that's why we say the plane of the net because you got to get and get down and he goes a little bit he's down he also walks in with his knees bent so when he's down, that's his down. He's already down now at the ball and being ready. Okay, so obviously let's actually analyze this. Anneli Waters, that's a great third shot drop, especially being back footed. And luckily the ball comes cross court and she's late on getting down herself, but she gets it back. Not a great reset, but definitely not a speed up. And then we get into this hands battle, kind of because her fifth shot isn't as good as it could be. Ben decides, okay, I'm going to speed up in front of me. And then he goes cross court. And that's probably where this point breaks down. He has one of the best backhands, but as you can see, giving his opponent that much time and hitting it right to the paddle, he doesn't even have to move much. The separation is where it's at. And so even for the phenomenal Ben Johns if he had attacked straight on and maybe he just caught this wrong may, he may have been trying let's get my little guy right here he may have been trying to go here somewhere in this range and just got a little extra spin on it let me erase this so we can see the ball he may have gotten a little extra spin on it and that's what drove it extra to the right so he may have not been aiming there but once you're doing that you're late and so it comes back quick he's late getting over and leave waters also didn't come i would have liked to have seen on this where he speeds this up that ball 
once again, these, are, these things are happening rapidly quick. But uh, instead of Annalie Waters being here, I would like to see her here. And I think that would have helped with this middle ball. Ben Johns probably would have let it just go back to her, and they would have been hugging the middle. Uh, but once again, she's staying out of Ben's way, which is fine. That's very used to it. So I can understand where she's giving him that extra space. But I think for if you were playing with your po your partner who's not Ben Johns, you're going to want to be there and be tighter to the middle to help out, not expecting him to have to, to do so much. But the big breakdown is the attack right here. The attack cross court gives the opponent too much time. And finally, someone actually posted it in the comments. And I think it's the Pac Pythagorean theorem, which I'll do real quick in a triangle. 90 degree triangle right there. This, this line, this top line is always going to be the longest side. So this would be a five. This would be a three. This would be a four. If this was inches, three inches, four inches, five inches, it'll be feet, three inches, four, four feet, five feet. And so you're, when you're crossing tack, cross court, like Ben Johns does here, it's the longest distance giving your opponent the extra time. And then your opponent gets to hit it back the shortest distance, which he did. He hits it directly in front of him. And so that's really why if – even if he had, had attacked to uh, Kawamoto's forehand would have been better uh, than attacking to Rittenmeyer uh, right into his body. Okay. I think we've analyzed that, learned quite a bit of a few things. I really actually think the best thing we learned on that point is watching how when the ball doesn't come to Ben Johns, He's moving forward and taking ground while the ball is on his side of the court. Okay, uh, Kawamoto to serve. Oh, looks like Annalie Waters missed on that one. Let's back it on up. Take a look at this point. So sh she gets the short. I just want to see how that is inside the half court line as you'd call it past the kitchen obviously and so that's a green light and it's going to her strong backhand she's going to drive that ball and i don't have any problem with her driving it cross court because annalee waters is still coming up she gets it down to her knee and gets exactly what you want this is what you want you want if you're driving the third shot all you want is a softer ball coming back so you can hit an easier fifth shot drop. What's funny is I actually think her foot's her uh, left foot is inside the baseline on this one, and her right foot's inside the baseline. So she didn't get a lot of extra ground, but she definitely got it with a softer, higher ball, and she hits a great drop to Ben's backhand, keeping him honest. And sometimes you get lucky. That ball definitely went long. But Ben is doing exactly what he should be doing. On this shot, for most people, and especially with Ben John, so if Ben was not playing Riddenmeyer, where he would go, he would go into this area. I know that's about the world's worst arrow I've ever drawn, but I want to give the circle. So he's going to come here. And... He's totally fine, even though it's on the uh, forehand. He's going to keep it tighter because they will more likely often make the air. But given how weak Rindmeyer's backhand is, I mean, this is not. I mean, this is a good dink. Don't get me wrong. He doesn't move his feet properly, so he's here when he hits it. He moves once and then kind of step leans where he needs to take that second step. If you, if I had footage right now and I showed. Tyson McGuffin, he would take two steps, keep the ball in front of him, and keep the ball down. And so by that, he just pops it up, smash, and Annalie Waters misses it. So they really, really got away with one here um, just on, on an error. But several good shots, and this is what I've talked about on when should you do a third shot drive. If you've watched some of the other videos... I'm going to use blue here for you guys. So once again, our blue always represents green. This is the box that really is. If it bounces in here, 
go for it because you're hitting cross court. You have the biggest amount of error, meaning you're most likely going to hit it in. You can hit it hard. You're hitting to the person that's still coming up. And anything getting deflected this way, your partner is ready for. So that is you still have your very good court position. So as you watch, she hit this ball. Let's move this forward. She hits. She doesn't get out of position, right? She's right back one step back into good position. She's not running around it. Now, if she'd run around this to her forehand, I'd say no, 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 because you're a left-handed partner, and then you left a big hole. But she's got a great backhand. You can speed up this backhand. Um, and so I think that's one of the big things to take away from this point. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Should be Kawamoto still serving. Yep, here we go. Oh, I think caught Ben and Annalie Waters <laughs> by surprise. Everything after the surprise was uh, a little rough. Here we go. That's when Ben just goes, okay, I'm going to take over. So let's, I'm just slowing it down here. So fifth shot drive, decent drive, gets a shorter ball. So let's just take this back. This is the first ball, how deep it is. He drives it in waters, and that's how second. So that is the goal. That's all it is, is you have now said, okay, they're in, essentially, not on purpose, but essentially inviting me up. I'm getting a softer, closer ball so I can more often than not hit a good, easier drop shot. Rindmeyer hits a good drop shot. It hits the net, but – and then Annalie Waters, essentially because of that, wow, look how high that ball is going over that net. Um, that is a good – I would say from this camera, that's at least three feet over the net. So that is a pure pop-up, so definitely a speed-up by uh, Kawamoto – especially with her forehand and she goes hard at Ben John's backhand. It's a nice spot on that. And there it is. So that's the thing. Sometimes you got to slow these down to really understand what happened. So Ben goes back at her and what does she do? Literally from two points ago, she's going to now try attack cross court. So by choosing to do that, once again, you've split second decisions on this and that's why you have to be able to practice these. So most likely from what I see here, watch, how you see how she goes back and the paddle goes down to get to the ball and then it starts to come forward because she's still trying to uh so her okay let me rephrase this here's the forehand watch how big her follow through is she's putting 100 percent into this then she's trying to get back to her ready position she's not really back there by the time the ball comes back and so the ball gets into her body so my opinion is the ball got into her body because her hands aren't far enough out so I don't think this was a conscious decision. I really want to make that clear is I don't feel that she was like, oh, I'm going to cross court this. That's the play I want to do. Because also see how high that ball is. It's above Ben John's head. Like that's not on purpose. That is because she swings really hard here and then can't get into a good ready position before the ball's coming back. And so then she's essentially late on the back swing. A lot of people don't practice that enough when doing speed up practice. And this is something a lot of people, that's one of the reasons why you start trying to find a better, you know, drilling partner so that the ball keeps coming back more often so that you realize you need to have more compact swings so that you're not getting so far away from your ready position. So anyways, the ball comes back, gets into her body and she hits it cross court and that's where it all breaks down. But really, if you said, okay, what is the error? What is something she could change here? It's getting back to a better ready. Arms further out, knees more bent, and then she's catch. if she caught this ball earlier, that ball's not going to float up like that. It would stay, it would go down. And so that's actually the problem is in the, the technique side of it. Everything, in my opinion, on this impact is, She's stuck just trying to make contact, and the whole ball floats. Her wrist even breaks, as you can see. See how – I'm going to draw it right here. So look at her wrist. This is Kawamoto's wrist right here. You can see that her her right arm, because she's left-handed, so it's her right arm. I don't want anyone confused. 
is now broken and on top and completely flat. That means a lot of the power has left that impact, and she was trying to roll it over because she felt how high it came up off her paddle initially. And so that's the issue. And that occurs almost for anybody if the ball gets into your body and you're not able to hit it out in front of you. Okay. Ben John steps up off of a weird bounce and puts it away. Now over to Rittenmeyer. Here we go. So I'm just going to show this to you guys. This, what a lot of people don't know is this is one of the most frustrating things for uh, great players in regular doubles or mixed doubles. He comes here, he drives, gets the shorter ball, fights it back, and then he turns right here. Rindmeyer looks back and goes, hey, where's my partner? She should be here slamming this and helping put this away. She's not moved up at all. He's like, dude, I hit two shots, and you didn't move. You didn't even come with me, let alone the ball came to me. Right here, she should already be Kawamoto, if, and we've done this as examples, really getting to show what Ben Johns and Annalie Waters does. Uh, Kawamoto should already be walking to here. Now, she could run there, get low early, do whatever she wants. We, we all saw from Ben Johns, she could literally walk it and at least get to zone two. She could easily be to zone two once again there, and she just, see how she almost goes back? She comes in, split steps, and then kind of goes back. So, I mean, she has four. She's getting ready. She's trying to be attentive and be ready to help out her teammate. But having her, this, where Ben Johnson can just bail out. He's like, hey, okay, you hit it hard. I don't even have to worry. I'm just going to hit it over here to the left and get a complete bailout because uh, Kawamoto is not applying any pressure or helping out her teammate. Uh, one, now she had to hit a great shot and also then battle to get herself up. And then they're not really positioned well for this speed up. And so the whole thing really breaks down in the fact of her not playing just good position pickleball when and what her teammate is doing. She, as we've mentioned in an earlier clip, uh, she does not move forward until basically her partner moves forward, whether she hits it or he hits it. But now he's all the way up there, and she's finally now coming. It's, it's something she really needs to fix in her game. This is also should not have probably taken that out of the air. Pops that ball up. And then we lose... In my opinion, we lose some frames on this switch. It seems like they've every time they've done the switch, we're losing about two or three frames. That ball is clearly further in front than it is. For those of you who can't see it or you're watching on a small screen, the ball is blurry, and it's right here, and it looks like it's post her impact, actually. So I'm going to go one frame forward on this. Go one f oh, no, it is pre-impact. So pre-impact, and then she hits it. And she definitely goes for the drive on that ball. But watch also this. Okay, so her front foot makes it to the kitchen. Her back foot's way, way down. She pops this up. She realizes right here, oh, shit, I popped this up. Watch how quickly she goes back. She jumps back all the way back almost to midcourt to be able to have enough time. So I like that move. I don't think people do that enough of – giving ground when you should get ground that buys her time uh the smash on it i probably would say you should have taken this and reset this ball um but i'm sure that this shot works well on lower level people i mean man that is a phenomenal backhand low to annalee waters the thing that annalee waters does right here that is what separates her from a lot of the other people is this shot that's low to her, she also hits low. That barely clears the net. I mean, that thing is millimeters above that line. And so even though it is still rising, uh, Rindmeyer can't really catch it that well of seeing it because it's basically being blocked by the net here, 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 and now it's visible. It's probably visible right there. And so then he's late on catching it. See how it gets into his body once again. His ready position. Just want you guys to see this. 
Like, this is post-impact, and his arm is 100% backhand, 100% in his body. Um, just this, you're just going to get all these pop-ups. You see this? Like, was it a good shot by Anna Lee Waters? Did it redirect the power hit by Kawamoto? Yeah, but there's no reason that that has to be a pop-up that Ben can... Ben barely hit this. He's just ping pong. I'm going to put it down. I'm just going to put it at your feet. I'm not going to hit this hard. I don't even want to hit it hard. I'm just I'm going to hit it straight down at you. I mean, that is, the ball is above his head at impact, above his head past the kitchen line. I mean, he doesn't have to take a big swing. And that's one thing for a lot of the lower level players. They see this kind of ball. They try and take a real big swing and overpower people, and then they miss it into the net, miss it out of the court, whatever. Dude, if you get a ball that high, it's much more important to be precise on direction of where the ball goes so your opponent can't hit it. What do you do? You just hit it directly. I'm just going to hit it right to your feet. I don't have to overpower you. I just have to hit it to where you can't hit it right into your body. So um, let's just back this up. So number one takeaway from this point, the number one thing you should learn, if the ball comes back to your teammate, you need to make ground. You need to move to zone two. For those of you watching this clip and haven't seen before, the kitchen line is three. Right down the middle is two. And the baseline is one. And you're like, maybe you sit there and go, well, that's kind of weird. Well, the reason we do it that way it doesn't make a lot of sense when you're having to look at it on the opposite side of the court. So I'm going to do it on this side of the court. So it makes more sense when you're, it's on your side of the court because you won. You start at one, right? You start back when you're serving or whatever. Then right here is two, and then right here is three. So it makes a little bit more sense when you see it this side of the – and if I could get my numbers to come up. Uh, and so Kawamoto really needs to move up into that, and that's where I think for this point it really suffers and why you can see that they're – they're, they're hanging tight in this game, but they're definitely not in the lead. And so the first area where this point suffers and where I think Ritten, Meyer, and Kamo Kawamoto could have maybe won this point is if she was already she should already be at the kitchen. This little soft reset pop-up that goes all the way to the half court, she could have smashed on Ben Johns if she was in the right place. Okay, then... This pop-up is just a pure mistake because she's trying to – she didn't come up earlier, so then she's trying to take too much ground on one ball shot. And you feel that you need to do that. You will just instinctively do that a lot of times when you're like, I'm all the way at the baseline. My partner's all the way at the kitchen. I got to get up there. And so then she pops this up. And after that pop-up, I kind of feel like it's done, uh, but – I hate to give Rindmeier just a complete bailout on saying that this swing pop-up by him is not kind of atrocious because it really is. Um, it's just how long can I talk about his bad ready position that's going to do that just over and over and over again. I really hope he takes from this match alone. And it's like, man, I need to work and change that ready position. Okay, let's move on to the next one. by Ben let's back this up okay it's a good third shot drop Ben actually has to step back which I know he doesn't want to be doing and it's not an aggressive uh, fifth at all so he's just like okay I'm just going to keep going over to that backhand that I want to. And we're going to get up here. So basically, the one thing, here's beautiful pickleball. If you want to know what beautiful pickleball looks like, besides the fact that he had to step back, one drop, okay, I got three feet. I'm just going to take my three feet, thank you very much. Then two drops. And then 
three. A lot of people would call this a dink. He's off the kitchen line. He never gets to the kitchen line. That's as far as he gets up. So he's three feet from the kitchen line. And so I just view this as, hey, that's the third drop. Chose to do, didn't speed that up. A lot of people will get to that third ball and be like, I'm going to speed this up. And so he just takes his time and says, okay, it took me three shots to get to the kitchen line, get to where I want. Now I'm here. And he is, for all intents and purposes, this speed up, bounce speed up. I've lost my count that we're on, but I just want to say that if you are keeping track of these, this is definitely a bounce speed up for Riddenmeyer. And he is definitely immediately on the defensive. So that was a horrible idea. Watch this. Everything after this point, he go. Ben Johns is basically neutral. I'll say that this bounce speed up is so slow. Ben Johns is neutral. And then Rinmeyer is instantly on defense. Uh, pushes Kawamoto all the way back to the baseline. Look at her go all the way to the baseline. So she's on defense. Rinmeyer is now still on defense because he's not at the kitchen line. Ben Johns is on offense. He does a bounce speed up. Has, once again, a bailout because Kawamoto is staying back at that baseline. It's like, I understand, like, you had to go back to the baseline. But she just stays there. And so when if you're going to live at the baseline, you're always letting the opponent bail out. And Ben Johns, I think even he looked at it like, man, she's far back. That may have been what made him miss this ball, is just realizing, oh, my word, I can – lift this ball and go really far back. Um, so just an error on that side. But let me just see. I want to see this. I mean, it's a decent drop, but nothing. He's still impacting that almost at shoulder height. So it's truly a miss. So, I mean, you do technically have to give this one, if you're keeping track, to Rinmeyer that he did a bounce speed up. And in the end, they won the point. But uh, that shot, it definitely isn't what won the point. You just got an error on your opponent right there. So I would say that the point actually broke down at this. About like the point was progressing once again, as we talked about. That's his fifth. Here is Ben John's seventh. And now we're at neutral. Choosing to speed this ball up. He did go straight down the middle. I think that's the one thing that Rittenmeyer can see is how much room Annalie Waters is giving this middle line. And that is what Ben John just anticipates. So Ben John hits this ball. This is what most people don't notice. And like, why is Ben John's so much better than other people? Okay, we're going to mark his feet so that you guys can see this. We're going to mark it in red. This is when he's impacting. He's not even impacting the ball. Let's get to where he impacts the ball. Okay, I'll move, a, I'll move my a little bit more because I'll give Ben John's even more credit because he kind of deserves it. So one foot there. One foot here. And now we're going to start moving forward. This is impact that ball at crossing the plane of the net. Let's do yellow. He's moved a little. Now this is where things really change for Ben Jones. On the bounce, he's, we're going to go blue. And now we're going to get to paddle hit. And I got to go, uh, I only have so many colors. We're going to go back to red. Okay, here's red at impact of ball. He went from midcourt back to the kitchen line with, uh, with what I, once again, I'm still calling a drop. You can call it a dink to a midcourt dink. And I think two or three points ago, I actually mentioned that Ben Johns normally is going to go and put it here. Um, and he does that. Uh, for a reason and higher level players if you're practice enough and keep the ball low enough it's a better spot to put it but what makes and separates him is he went from midcourt backhand drop dink all the way back up to the kitchen line before impact and that's really really what uh, changes things in your game too many people hit this they would hit it right here hit and they watch their ball and they stay there and they stay there and they stay there. And then there's this huge hole that you're not back to. And so when Ben Johns pushes, I want you to see this. When you slow it down, you can see it. He is pushing off that left leg. 
and see how that left the power off that left leg naturally stopped his momentum going to the left, pushes him up, and he almost has a little hop back. So he's already gotten probably 12 inches back from the initial push up just to hit the shot, pushing his body back into the court. And that's the one thing where we talk about is you need to hit the shot with your legs, not just swinging your arm. If you're just swinging your arm, you're going to stay where you're at because you have no momentum to get back to where you need to be. So that's where the, the drilling comes in of like, oh, my legs really are getting tired hitting backhand, dink, backhand drop over and over again because you're doing it with your leg. Build up those leg muscles. The whole game gets much, much easier. Okay. Uh, a lot of different things we talked about in this point. Let's move on to the next one. Obviously, Ben would like to have that one back. He's his turn to serve. I absolutely love Ben giving the backhand to Annalie Waters here. Absolutely love that. Let's back this up. So much good stuff here. Okay. Ben, I will just let you guys know. If you go back and look at Ben, I'd say two years ago, maybe 18 months, his serves were deeper. They are definitely deeper in singles, and he really takes it off in uh, doubles. He's gotten much more patient about, I'm not going to miss this. I'm going to get my points not on the serve, so I don't care. So a lot of people are like, it's really important to have a deep serve, and then people are missing their serve. Ben Johns is hitting it in the middle of the box, He's like, I'll beat you the rest of the way. Now watch this ball. He goes, okay. People are like, that's a middle ball. That should be the forehand ball. That should be my ball. You just took my ball. What is What would, would be the optimal thing for Ben and Annalie Waters here? Who do we want to be approaching the net in this situation? Ben wants to approach the net. It's not a, is Ben's drop better than Annalie Waters? They both can drop the ball. You and your teammate should both be able to drop the ball. She may even speed up this ball. She kind of does a drip. I would call that a drip because that is such a high drive. I would definitely say that's more of a drip. But what did this allow? This allowed Ben to get all the way to midcourt before the ball crossed the plane of the net. That's your optimal playing style. So if the opponent is dumb enough, to hit the ball or can't hit the ball accurately enough to where they want to, a.k.a. to Ben, to hold him back. Dude, take advantage of it. Hey, I don't got to hit that ball. Fantastic. I'm moving up. Thank you. I just got free ground. Here's the other thing I love about this. Ben doesn't leave. I mean, he is a little aggressive. Let's not kid ourselves. He's not, not going to get up here. But I'm just going to mark... Here, we'll do it in, I'm going to mark where he is here, the back of his heels, and then we're going to mark the middle of the court. I'm going to say, this is eyeballing it, I'm going to say that's exact zone two. So he is a little overly aggressive, but if you notice, his distance, I'll do it in blue, this distance right here between the yellow and the red line, that distance, is almost the same distance between Annalise distance from the baseline. So if Annalise up a foot, foot and a half from the baseline, well then Ben can be up a foot, foot and a half from zone two because he's still the same amount of distance from his playing partner. Now we're just gonna go around this for a second, watch this. He starts going up, gets just past, split steps and stops. He's not rushing to that kitchen line. Sees it go to his partner again. What does he do? He gets ready. Takes a step in case he needs to. And watch this. Once Ben John notices that she's back, he doesn't go up there. Time and time and time again. Look at that. He's here. Takes a couple inches to feel more comfortable. Goes over here. Gets ready and gets comfortable. Still doesn't, he is at least three to five feet off the kitchen line and now gets to the kitchen line. I'm going to remove these lines. Got a lot of lines up here. 
But that's the big thing that if you watch the other points with Rittenmeyer, Rittenmeyer abandons his teammate who isn't coming up, and so he's just at the kitchen line. There's a big gap between them the whole time. Ben Johns, nice and patient, waits for his teammate and stays with his dance partner. He's like, I got nowhere to get to because I got no reason to get there. I'm not going to go more than one zone away from my partner. I'm applying pressure with where I'm at on the court. I'm ready for every ball. I get down every time for every ball that's being hit. I get down. Look at him get down. And then Annalie Waters comes up, and now they're both, okay, let's go. Let's do this. Absolutely love this point. Just going through it one more time real fast here. This is one of the best points, in my opinion, of the match. of something to take away from it and see quality play. Now, here's the one thing I can tell you. Good, great drop by Annalie Waters. She gets away with one. It doesn't actually get as low as she wants it to. He still takes it out. Rinmeyer has this tendency of kind of soft flick where he, like, it's kind of an invite up. And so Annalie Waters, after this many points, has seen that. She recognized he's not going to hit this ball that hard is below the net. He's going to have to lift it back up over it, and she's now charging. She's trying to catch him off guard, and she's full throttle. The one thing I can tell you is, until you have played a ton, a ton, a ton, this is not a smart attack shot. For the average player, I cannot recommend that attack. What you would want to do, because it's even not that high, it's kind of mid-chest, and if you don't hit it directly at your opponent for them not to be able to get out of the way, that's probably an outball. I'll be honest, that's probably, Annalie probably hit an outball. Now, could Rittenmeyer get out of the way? No, because she hits it right at him, and that's the smart thing to do. But if you are doing these, your opponent is probably going to get out of the way. So that is the only thing in here. For most people, you should take that ball, reset that ball, get to the kitchen line, and then keep fighting. I definitely don't recommend starting the fight when you're at midcourt, hoping that they don't get out of the way. If Rittenmeyer had a better ready position, I think he would have gotten out of the way. And from there, just like it occurred, the, I think it was two, three points ago, um, it was on Kawamoto's serve. This ball comes across. Let's get it here. So Rinmeyer goes cross court to Ben. Ben goes straight forward to Kawamoto, and she comes back trying to go cross court, which goes to Ben's forehand, and it's over. The ball got into her body again so that she could try and speed it up. Rinmeyer is trying to speed it up from midcourt because she's that far back. If you're going to play that far behind your teammate to give him space for his forehand, I'm totally fine with that. You have to live in the world that you're not going to speed up anything. Everything is a reset soft back into the kitchen. And so she shouldn't be stepping back, letting the ball get into her body, and then trying to power this ball. That's where they've lost, I think, two in a row. Every time they've gotten to it into her backhand speed up where she's at midcourt, I think they've lost the point. I think we're at 100% on that. And so that's something to really take a look at. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Ben serving again. I think one thing on this point, obviously we're going to back it up, is Rinmeyer needs to get better about not just inviting uh, people up. He does a lot of just inviting them up. Okay, here we go. Obviously, Ben and Annalie Waters are stacking. Ben serve once again, barely getting to the middle of the box. I just want to point that out to people because there's so much on YouTube about serve it deep. And I can't stress enough about it. Serve it in, then serve it deep. And so if your opponent's not hitting crushing hard balls back that you're really having to deal with, your goal on a serve is just to get a soft ball back that it's easy for you and your teammate to either make a decision for a third shot drive or hitting a third shot drop that you can do consistently. And as long as you're doing that, then take down 
your potential error ratio by overhitting on a serve going for an ace. If Ben's not doing it, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This ball would be better if Rindmeyer let it bounce and then got pace on it to Ben or Annalie Waters, then this is just a cross-court invite-up. I think he does that because they're switching and the way that they do their switch, he's late and he doesn't want to go backwards. He's like, just run up there. Didn't get a very good split step. And so his back is leaning forward. Now watch that. He's, he starts leaning his back really early. So what I want you to notice here on Rittenmeyer is he's not straight up, right? You can see from his left foot that he's kind of slowing down his pace, steps with his heel really hard, slows it down, and then, but the knee bend doesn't really change. The ball is getting lower, but his knees kind of, he kind of goes soft on the right leg. But there's not a lot, and so most of this, and that impact, I mean, look at his back. It's just completely over here, right there. And that's the one thing on where this, once your back has started to lean forward, you are going to, no matter how low the ball goes, you are going to try and take it out of the air. And that's what you don't want to do. You want to get up here, get lower with the knees so you can make the decision. Are you going backwards or are you going forwards on it? So once again, this cross-court dink is just a complete invite. You completely put up your white flag and say, okay, you guys get to the kitchen line because of this drop. You're not doing anything to make them earn it. And then we're into a uh, kitchen battle. If you were playing the game 21, which we talk about, uh, the other team just got at least one point because they made it to the kitchen line. Uh, and then you're playing out for one other point, and then they got it. So if they're playing the game 21, Ben Ailey Waters just got two points. Uh, and so that's the one thing I like about the game 21 uh, because it really teaches people that you need to be keeping your opponent back or at least making them work for every inch like Ben did in an earlier point where it took him three shots to get to the, the kitchen line. Okay, let's look in now at this dink game. Once again, Rindmeyer is leaning his back forward, not doing much with this. This leg basically doesn't ever bend past that point. Let me, i sorry, I pointed and said this leg, I pointed with my mouse, not the... This left leg, let's watch this knee bend. You're going to see that it very little additionally. It just basically gets to this point and it locks, and then everything is with the back. See how he's just hitting this ball technically with, like, with his back muscles? He's not actually utilizing his leg. He's not pushing off that leg to put it where he wants, and that's going to lead to problems. But let's go here. So then Ben comes back across. Kawamoto kind of does a run around forehand, lets the ball get too far back. Yeah, that's just position. So they have forehands down the middle, right? So you should think that there should never be a time where you're able to go down the middle on them. And Ben goes, okay, hit the backhand, and you didn't cover. I can understand Rudmeyer's step back to guard his side because he has half the court is wide open and Ben is definitely good enough coming off that to put it over there if he wants to. But yeah, Kawamoto was really late. I wish we had the other camera angle to show how big a hole that is once the ball goes here. Once Rindmeyer goes left, that hole just expands. And so good job going to his back his other side. The other thing is his paddle is so far over here that when Ben Johns essentially goes for the would be a chicken wing on somebody else and they'd at least get their paddle up to the ball, he doesn't even get his paddle over. So this, I still believe it is by Kyle Moto's decision to run around for her forehand, which gets them out of good court position. But this ball being that clearly through, we really need the other camera angle. But I think this ball 
right there shows it. I'm going to put a little yellow dot. If you can't see it because you're small screen, that's where the ball's at. And I think that is literally just a forehand volley. And that's where she was like, dude, what, how do you expect me to get that ball? That is definitely within your arm reach. And his paddle is just so on the backhand side that he's just too exposed. You got to have that arm out. You got to have it in a neutral position. And let's just look at the other side. Let's do, I'm going to take us to this frame. So that's, at best, that is Ridmeyer's ready position, which we can see his paddle. You can, I can see this side of the that top head of the paddle right there. And right here we see Annalee Waters' paddle. Arms out, paddle head in a nice neutral 12 o'clock position. Uh, and for those of you who have never heard of the 12 o'clock position, think of a clock. I'm going to do this on a flat surface. This is a clock. We have 12. We've got 1. We got 11, we got 10 o'clock, 2, 3, 9, right? So right now, when the paddle is facing dead this way for Rittenmeyer, that's a 9 o'clock. That's his ready position. He's at a 9 o'clock, the complete face out. Annalie Waters, it's in front of her. She has it like this, pointing right at 12 o'clock. And that allows her to go backhand, forehand, faster and quicker and that's why she doesn't miss those okay yeah I think Ben went for the chicken arm more than actually putting it between them and Rindmeyer is just super super late okay let's move on to the next one Ben is serving and I think he's grabbed the last two points nice deep ball nice deep ball by uh, Kawamoto. Ben decides to fire away at this third shot drive, which floats because he was moving backwards instead of forwards. So when you have your body way back, what does your body want to do? See how it lifts up? Ben's left foot lifts up there, and once it's lifting up there, the ball is going to rise. And so this is a shoulder height volley for uh, Ridmeyer to just smash. Annalise Waters went too far forward. She goes, she sees third shot drive. That she is, she's doing shake and bake. See what I'm saying? So by the time she turns around, it doesn't matter. She goes, you've chosen to drive. I have to do shake and bake. We're taking the risk. And that's why her feet are late. Because Ben's driving. I'm shaking for the bake. Um, and uh, and that's the situation. But yeah, this this breaks down by Ben choosing to drive when he is. All the way back, his body isn't in the correct position, and he drives the ball, and that's just a mistake. He should have said, okay, good deep ball. I'm moving backwards, which I don't want to be. I'm going to drop this ball, give myself the most amount of time, and keep playing on. So that, that was a little bit of a mental error on that one. Okay, back over to the other side for Rittenmeyer's serve. I'm going to back that up. I kind of look like it came off weird. Yep, that hits the net. I just can't tell if it hit Kalmoto. I don't think it does. I think they got that one. Let's, I just want, yeah, okay. So they definitely got that one. So just a missed Ernie. Yep, just hit the net. So Ben hits this shot a lot of times, in my opinion, this doesn't work out because watch this right here. He goes for it, but he has to avoid his teammate. She's right here on the line and he's right here. So now he can't freely go this direction. Um, that is the issue on this. She tries to get out of his way, but what she really needs to do is go because she, I don't think she thought he was going to try and jump the whole thing. So I think if she'd gone back out of his way, he would have had a higher probability of not feeling that and getting it. But once again, maybe he thought it was going to carry further. 
than it did. Uh, man, he jumps that unbelievably tight across that kitchen line. That's impressive. It's an impressive jump to not have a foot fault. The judge over here on the right-hand side didn't put anything up to indicate a foot fault, so we'll assume that they are correct on that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so decent third shot drop. I'll say decent still. I mean, if he hadn't jumped it, it wouldn't have been that high. So it's hard to kind of say from this camera angle of how high it actually was coming through. Um, but uh, you could almost say an unforced error again. So that's at least two kind of unforced errors on Ben in this match, which is kind of keeping Ridmeyer and Kamoto in it. That's sometimes what you got to do. You just got to hang in, get one more ball over. Instinctively, when I say that, Rudmeyer misses. Okay, so third shot drive. Really bad third shot drive. Once again, same thing. Backhand, one hand backhand, just lifts the ball. If you're going to hit the ball high like that with that little power, why are you driving it? You should be dropping it because all you're doing is making it easier on your opponent. So now you have a faster, more skipping ball coming back to you than you did on the original drive that you try and drop, and you don't get it. So... This ball, shorter, look at much shorter. It's actually in Annalie's body when it's bouncing right there. If you see that coming down. So he has this easy ball. He can just drop that one. And now he's got this hard ball that he tries to, that's skipping. He tries to drop and can't do it. So that's when I get very adamant about we need to realize what are we trying to do on a third shot drive. And I'm just going to back this up a little bit more. This ball was a great ball to do that drop. And so it just doesn't make any sense why he decided to drive it and hit such a poor drive on this ball, which really broke things down. If you get a good ball to hit a drop, that's that's plan A. Also, I'd say that he at least didn't run around it. Like, that's the one good thing. I will say that there's this huge... Huge amount of space again between them. So if Annalise Waters gets something, she gets all this space right here to just speed it up. And Annalise Waters didn't get it, but Ben got it. And what did he do? He hits it right into that big giant area, and then he can't do much about it. The other thing is, on this drive, if you're going to do the drive and you're going to try for the shake and bake, then your teammate needs to be moving up as we've talked about numerous points throughout this match, Kalmoto already sees this ball. There's no way that ball is coming to her at that point. Like, look at this ball going dead straight to the right. She doesn't move up. She should be moving up, 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 moving up. Doesn't. It's just it's inexcusable, and she really needs to change and improve that game. And I really hope you guys are learning that from this match and going to apply it to your game. You're going to win a lot of more easy points because of it. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Two quick serves there getting finished out. Decent serve. Good middle return. We're going for another drive. Tries for the fifth shot drop. Can't get it again. So in my opinion... The result that Rindmeyer is hoping for, he's not getting. This ball is a nice soft ball, sits up decently. I mean, it has a little bit of spin, but not any extreme amount. That ball's coming much quicker where he's not getting his body in the correct position to hit this shot. So both times when he's getting a forehand, basically flick volley from Ben Johns where he's able to put additional spin on it, he's giving himself a harder ball to try and hit a drop. And... Not getting either one of those. Okay, moving back over to Annalie Waters. Here we go. Let's back that up. Okay, so that is definitely a third shot drop from Ben Johns over to Kawamoto. And Annalie Waters is... So she's already gone to... Zone two. At impact of Ben John, she's at zone two. 
which is at least six feet further forward than Kawamoto is getting on any of hers. She sees this ball and she attacks. Now, this is extremely aggressive. But seeing how much she basically notices the body position of right about here, she sees it. I'd say she she's tentatively moving up here. And then she can see right there that the body posture of Kaomoto is going to go back. And that's where she really starts taking additional steps. So once she sees that she goes back, it's she's now in attack mode. I'm going to assume that that ball went in because it's it lands in the like behind the le the left leg of Rindmeyer, and once again, I wouldn't really blame Kawamoto on this one again. If you were to reach your paddle out, which you should do with your teammate when you're understanding where the court position is. Rindmeyer's paddle, her forehand is out, missing the ball, but his isn't getting extended at all because here we can see his ready position. This is post-impact. The ball is left. The ball is coming this way. It has left her by at least two or three frames. His paddle is still sitting firmly on the backhand side in his body, and you're just going to miss a lot of stuff. So when people are like, who has fast hands? You can literally say because of that, Rindmeyer has some of the slowest hands in pickleball, and he's going to miss all of those. And that's just really unfortunate. So the breakdown in this, man, that really is also a high ball. I can't say that a major, you have to be, if you're going to let a ball bounce and you're going to hit a dink that's not even a dink that's literally like a soft drive I don't even know what that is coming off Kawamoto which just lets them go after it it almost feels like they don't have that much of a game plan like she almost is like uh, am I supposed to hit it to Ben I thought we were trying to keep it away from Ben but yeah the, the number one impact thing is this ball is just coming back way too high off what should be an easy dink. And the other thing is is to not realize where's the first place you probably want to put this ball. Okay, so if you're a lower level player, your easiest shot is just going here. Go your forehand to their forehand. This gives you the highest probability. So in the worst case where you go, okay, they hit this good drop. It got me to push off the line. Where do I want to go? That's option one. I'll just literally put it up here. The box right here is option one. If you don't feel comfortable, you aren't happy about something, whatever, you're, you gotta, you're on the defense, you're bailing yourself out. If you are a higher level player and you've really practiced a lot, that's doing a straight thing on me, then you're going to go more into this zone to make them have to change directions with the ball, go between them, all this kind of stuff. I can, this is, this side over here is almost the worst location. I'll put a two on this. I'm not even going to put a number on the yellow box. But the yellow box is almost, because highest part of the net, right here, you have the shortest distance. Your opponent can earn a you. And... Yeah, there's almost nothing good that comes out of putting the ball there. I understand that she saw it visually with her eyes. Like, oh, there's some open ground. I'm just going to put it there and invite them up to the kitchen line. But, yeah, there's, there's, that's, a, that's a huge mental error by Kawamoto and almost doesn't know because, once again, they're only serve, return. She gets up there, backs off, and then just floats this ball to the wrong part of the court. Also, I'd say let's get it. Even though she stepped back, it still looks like she let it get into her body, which makes her pop it up. Very, very armsy uh, swing right there. Okay. Uh, a lot wrong in a very short uh, point. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Waters to serve.
I'm just going to double check. Yep, they definitely got that. It definitely looked in. I was just double checking. Okay, here we go. Waters to serve. Gets a little bit deeper than Ben's been getting his, which is fine. Still comfortably in. Mid-court on the return. Nice, soft backhand drop. I would also like to point out, what a lot of people think is, is that Ben is targeting uh, his backhand and going over here, which he's doing a little bit. But what he's really doing is he's targeting the person coming up. Ben is hitting it to the person coming up. And so it doesn't really matter that it's on that side of the court. It's just that is who, see how he, Rindmeyer returned the serve. They're trying to keep Ben back. That's actually smart. So Annalie Waters moves up, and Ben hits his drop where he's going to have the biggest area if Rindmeyer didn't make it all, all the way up there already and hits it to Rindmeyer. Now they're into a backhand dink battle, which Ben is going to say, like, dude, all day. And he just does that hard. So I talk about this with students a lot, and it is – beautifully framed in this. We normally don't get this good of a frame. This is almost a 90 degree angle on his wrist and his wrist is out what you would normally think of in the reversed way. So his wrist is cupped the opposite way where how most people hit their backhand dinks. And he's literally going to cup it. It's kind of cupped there and then he keeps coming with it and that's what allows him to just He's not even putting that much pace on the ball. It's all direction of just it's going to go really hard right. And it's almost impossible for your opponent to really pick up because your wrist isn't breaking. It stays, and so it's hard for them not to see where the direction of the ball coming off is. And so with him just holding that wrist line and that angle at 90 degrees, you can put the ball wherever you want. He's obviously used to it coming back. So here's the other thing. We talked about this several points ago. We're once again going to mark his feet. What does he actually use to hit this ball? Watch that foot. At impact, it is solid. It literally, all these frames, it doesn't even look like it moves, right? It's just a fixed rock. But he was pushing off. That See this? See that jump? You're not going to get that jump in the next several frames if you didn't fire that leg. So he's firing the leg here into almost a lunge jump to force himself back six feet to be ready for the next one. And so that's the thing where it's when you cup your hand and get to this 90 degrees on the ball, all the power is coming from the leg so he's firing the leg here and then letting and so that's why it's hard for Rittenmeyer to see where's the ball going to go how hard is it coming because you're not doing a big arm swing there's no big arm swing here right that's not a very big back swing he's just getting the paddle behind the ball getting it below the ball so he's just this is all position 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 gets to his position he wants and he fires his left leg what he's doing he's firing this left leg and the way you know he fired the left leg is because physics there has to be an equal and opposite reaction because he fired this leg his whole body then is all the way over to the right side that energy of him firing into this ball with his leg had to go somewhere and it naturally lifts his body back up and to the right and that all comes from the firing of the leg so beautiful shot there kind of a quick point kind of a nice put away but it really comes from using your legs to dink not your arms beautiful shot okay let's move on to the next one Annalie Waters to serve okay let's back that up so it's a decent serve. I actually like the depth on this ball and Kaomoto's hustle up to the kitchen line. Now, obviously, you normally don't want to be taking the ball off your back foot and leaning back, hitting a drop shot. Um, 
And so that's probably what gets this ball to float a little extra into uh, Rinmeier's forehand. But the one thing I do like about Ben Johns is he stopped. Like, he's, this ball is going over. This is the one thing that a lot of people don't do. Like, you'll see an entire match, and they don't do it once, where the ball is now crossing the plane of the net. Ben is down. Like, he is split-stepped here. His feet are, and he's getting lower. He kind of even does a secondary one. And in my personal opinion, that is... Sometimes you just don't give the ball quite enough. I think he thought it was going to come harder at him. And he goes super soft hands and just didn't get it far enough over. But he, nice out in front of his body, catches the ball. Sometimes you're just going to miss a shot. But from the big thing that I think to take away from this very short, quick point is to see that, yes, when you're doing it correctly, when the ball is crossing the plane of the net, which we talk about all the time and so many people, nope, they're late, they're late, they're late, they're late, is when someone's actually doing it correct. Look, the ball is crossing the plane of the net. He is already, he is split-stepping here. The, he has already made a decision to split-step probably here because he's in the air and then he's down. So his split-step starts to occur about here, and that ball hasn't even really crossed the plane of the net. If it is, it's tough to see from this angle. He's down, and he even has time to do a secondary one when to then to adjust and adapt to that ball. And that's what you want to be doing and seeing. That's giving you the highest probability of having control, controlling your body, and being able to be soft with your hands into that ball. And once again, just a little too soft or a little too much angle. So moving on over. Okay, Ben's turn to serve. That is game one in the books. Okay, let's back this last point up. Take a look at it. Like we said, Ben's turn to serve. Not going really deep with this ball. Comes back real short, so he's just going to say, thanks for the short ball. It's my back end. Just going to do a nice, easy drop, which we've talked about before. I'm just going to reiterate. The reason he's hitting this shot to Rindmeier over anything else is because Rindmeier is coming in. And that's going to give him more space and his opponent to be maybe not as ready to take the ball. So nice drop. They move up. Right here, this point is basically neutral. After this ball, when Ben hits this, this point will never be neutral again because of the decision by Rindmeier, which is right here. He takes this ball low. And does a little flick of basically trying to put a softball up high on his opponent. Now, if you're playing lower level people, that may catch them off guard because their ready position isn't good or they can't anticipate. But look at this. Annalie Waters split stepping. She's not hitting the ball, but she's getting her body ready for what's going to come again. And that's what you and your teammate need to always be doing. Whether you're hitting the ball or not, you need to get ready. Paddle out in front, arms out, sees this ball come. It's coming soft. So she goes, and she goes aggressive. Rindmeier is hitting this ball at his knee. And so Rindmeier, I'm just going to show this real quick. He feels he's got to be, it's 10-6. He feels he's got to be more aggressive. So he goes aggressive on a red ball. That's not what more aggressive means. Here, then uh, Dink Lob is actually an aggressive shot. So he goes, once again, aggressive on this. And from here, they're complete defense and the point's over. So I just want to show that to you really quick. Now let's back it all the way back up to here where he does his flick. So this is a red ball. It doesn't matter how you want to. Anything at the knee and below is red. Okay. From shoulder to knee is yellow. So this whole area, and this is at the point of impact. That's yellow. And I have to use blue because of our system. But anything above the shoulder, green ball, go for it crush away, light it up. Those are the three zones. The three zones, doesn't matter how tall you are, whatever, that doesn't change. So the reason why it's red is because you have to pick this ball back up. So at this moment, if he hit this hard and it has to go to this angle, Annalie Waters is ready. She just gets out of the way. The ball goes out. She doesn't have to do anything. They win the point. Okay, he flicks it, and he flicks it soft enough that that ball is going to land in. 
Well, now Annalie Waters gets to say, okay, I think that ball's in. I'm going to hit it at my shoulder down at you. And that's what she does. And so basically this is just a block volley back on Rittenauer. He is, you can even see it in his uh, feet. Is he leaning forward or leaning back? So he's going to take this. He's now, you see that left foot of his move back and on his heel? That's clearly defensive. So now he's just getting his paddle on it, trying to get it back over. Goes cross court to Ben Johns to slow it down. Definitely not trying to hit a winner there. Ben does the smart play, which a lot of people don't do. He doesn't actually try and beat this ball. He just resets it. He's like, ah, this ball's a yellow ball, clearly a yellow ball, going down towards a red ball. And he goes, I'm not going to attack that. I'm just going to put it back over. Puts it back over, no big deal. And then, in my opinion, this is, once again, not really a neutral ball because Rittenhauer, Ritt, Rittenhauer, Rittenmeyer is having to run all the way across and goes for this lob, which is... At now, it's defensive. Kawamoto does a great job of getting this ball back, trying to get it into the kitchen. It's still high. This is where it gets frustrating. She hits a great drop here. Uh, Rindmeyer notices that, and he moves up. See all that ground he takes? She doesn't. She doesn't come at all. So she's hitting great drops and not getting the benefit of hitting great drops. If you do that, then eventually you're not going to hit a good one, which then occurs. She then pops this one up and Ben Johns attacks it. But that's the problem. If she had moved up after the first one, taken enough ground, she would have been closer, more ready, and able to help her partner out of putting pressure back on the other your opponent and getting the game to a more neutral position. So... The two big takeaways from this point is you have to trust your drops. I have Kawamoto ever watches this video. I hope the number one thing she takes away is that I've said for probably close to an hour, how many good drops she has hit and how much she hasn't moved up. She needs to hit. She needs to already be moving towards the kitchen when she's hitting. You can kind of actually see this. Like she, she gets her right foot down, hits that ball. She's kind of falling back on this one. But you have to, she has plenty of time, then stands up really tall, doesn't take the ground that she should, and then get back into a ready position. So that's really, really number one. She had such a good drop that even her partner is like, hey, this is a great drop. Let's go. Let's get back up into this. And then he's always having to turn around and look way backwards, and he's disconnected from his doubles partner. But this point, if you really want to say, when did it break down, it's right here on that decision to flick this ball. Rindmeyer and uh, Kawamoto are on essentially defense. You can try and argue that he wasn't really on defense here, but that ball's so low and he's going to it, that's why he doesn't do a very good lob and or do the directional lob he should. Where, where would you want to lob this ball? I can understand that he's like, well, he's trying to lob it to Ben John's backhand, but Ben John's is all the way over here. So if I was going to lot, once again, very risky, not a good time. That's why I'm saying he's on defense. You'd want to lob it back over into this corner because then you're getting this person's the one who's got to get it. Uh, Annalie Waters is the one who has to get it. It's traveling most of the time on her backhand, and she's got to track it, run around. As most people like to run around and get it on their forehand side. So the big takeaways is you got to have more patience, even when you're down 6'10", then deciding to speed up red balls, you're just going to end the game that much quicker. By That's a mental error. And uh, that is not when someone's like, hey, man, i got to get more aggressive. It's not taking red balls. You're just decreasing your likelihood of... Uh, of winning. Okay, well that's a good first game. Let's move on to the next one.